Hello everyone and welcome to the season finale of season five GT3 here on Sim Sport Racing. My name's Alex Goldschmidt and welcome back to one Mr. Aaron Martin Pilkington. Good evening, Aaron. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me back. I uh, couldn't stay away after the shenanigans at Alton Park. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very, very true indeed. So... We're five rounds deep into this season. We have a 120 minute, that is a two hour encounter here at Donington Park based in Leicestershire. The full Grand Prix loop will be used. Uh, this circuit has been in operation since 1931 and reopened back, funnily enough, in the year of my birth, 1977. The Grand Prix circuit, just under 2.5 miles, 4.020 kilometers. And Aaron, one of the biggest things here is that this is a fantastic track and what a place to have a two hour endurance race with two mandatory pit stops. Yeah, no, the uh, the format uh, speaking loudly for itself. Usually we have these kind of like hour and a half or hour races. Today we've got two hours, two, two mandatory pit stops. So these guys are going to have to get their pit stop strategy uh, sorted out more than they usually would. And I love the fact that we're finishing at Donington. Um, I, I've recently become an absolute fan of the track especially as it's come to ACC. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what these guys can put on that tarmac. Yeah, so uh, talking about round five, well, that was uh, a bit of a slobber knocker. You and I both were there, and obviously we were joined <laughs> by Steve Bradley that uh, two weeks ago. Uh, but looking at the, uh, the results from that round, it was Charlie Crossland that managed to be able to get uh, the Grand Chelem, a complete victory in terms of fastest lap. Well, he didn't get fastest lap. That was Simon Crane, funnily enough. Charlie Crossland, who is actually running on British GT Esports in the GT4 class to him. He's one of the drivers that is not participating. Niall Schleter is out uh, for the rest of the season. Daniel Parker, Tom Smith, Jeffrey Wolf, Mantas Povilitis. So we wish Charlie all the very best of luck against some real life stars and also some uh sim stars just like himself the likes of niles noyox from uh, g2 racing really doesn't need introduction does the uh, the german driver however we've still got a title to decide this uh tonight so ross mcgregor was second mantas povilitis who has also signed out for this race uh finished in p3 ahead of regan mitchell lucas and talis rounds out the top five but looking at the standings rather rather close indeed Simon Crane's nearest competitors will be Regan Mitchell and Ross McGregor. But considering the fact that this is a two hour race, there's a maximum of 220 points for a victory, plus one for fastest lap and for pole position tonight, Aaron. This title is anyone's to the taking. You know, absolutely. I think even though Simon Crane sits on the top of that results table, he didn't have a good result out at Alton Park. Um, so it could be it could be a carbon copy of what we saw a couple of weeks ago for Simon Crane. Regan Mitchell was beaten to death by Ross McGregor. Uh, Ross McGregor was on an absolute flyer. You know he was off and on the track. The you know got a good result in the end. He's only forty points behind Regan Mitchell for sec. Well, I would say provisional second right now since we're not going to see Charlie Crossan. So it's it's all up, it's all up to play for between the top three, I believe. But you know you've you've got the three best drivers at, three best drivers at SimSport going at it. It could be anybody's game. I think we've just lost Alex there for a minute. I do want to talk about my partner in crime, my ex-partner in crime, actually, though, Adam Isalovich in sixth place there. Um, he was surprised as I was that he found himself in sixth place. He's a good 100 points or 90 points uh, behind fifth place Miles Dixon. So that's a big ladder to climb. But if anybody could do it, it could be Adam. His consistency speaks for itself. He's had a bit of a rough time with uh, mm -hmm. collisions and crashes and stuff, Adam. But I think he can actually make up to fifth place if he gets the right result here today. Indeed. Looking at the team standings, Pulse Simsport have 895 points. Uh, that's both uh, the pairing of Simon Crane and Miles Dixon. So Pulse Simsport could sew up the title very easily. Simsport Esports uh, are 272 points adrift down in second. Then it's Simsport Racing. Rounding out the top three on 604, 1001 racing by Simcoach 101. That is the pairing of uh, Carolis Sipovicius and Lucas Centalis. Uh, Sipovicius was the season four GT4 champion. Uh, Shumi get well soon. They are running fifth ahead of Sim Racing Legends. Give it gas racing. Huts, Huts Motorsport 
Randall Racing, Team Cube Racing completing the top 10. But I think for Pulse Simsport here, Aaron, the team's championship is a mere formality. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone's going to be looking to uh, pit Paul Sims for that for, uh, that first place in the uh, team championship, not by a long shot. Um, but it's it's all up for grabs. Before that, though, it's only it's only what is that nineteen points between second and third? That Simsport e uh, Simsport Esports and Simsport Racing. Uh, I think they could go at it as well. And then it's kind of a bit of a drop again to fourth place. So who knows? But you know, people could be swapping in the team championships. Now, qualifying underway here at Donington Park in Leicestershire. It's right on the cusp of the border between Derbyshire and Lincolnshire. And when I looked up the postcode itself, uh, yeah, it is Leicester, uh, Leicestershire, not Lincolnshire, as I've just accidentally said there. But Gernot Brandle in the 737 portion. Now, Aaron, um, being a devout sim racer yourself, I, I, I'm absolutely terrible behind the wheel of a sim. Um, I haven't even tried a set of quality competition. I don't even have a sim rig uh, at home. And as the late Murray Walker, who uh, we are racing in honour of again uh, this evening, as well as the late Queen of the Nordschleife, Sabina Schmitz, who we lost earlier this week at the young age of 51, but a lady that lived life to the full and scared the absolute bejesus of people in the M5 ring taxi around the 20 kilometer circuit. Uh, this track is going to suit particular vehicles, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, as we go on board here with Brandle, the Porsche seems to be absolutely blistering here. Probably one of the harder cars to drive. We saw, uh, I think it was Povey at uh, Alton Park do a grand job there. Shame he's not here today. But Brandle has got it all to play for. I think that the Porsche is going to do really well here if he's got it hooked up properly. I think all the front engine cars, the Bentley, uh, the Mercedes, they're going to have an absolute flyer here. A real good flyer. I mean, from turns one to nine at Donington, it's really much of a, a, a free flowing roller coaster, right? So, as long if you've got that hooked up, that's where most of your time is. Unfortunately, Donington, though, in itself can provide you with a lot of track cuts if you're not careful, especially through the S's. Um, a lot of these cars with the downforce that they've got on the GT3s will be looking to fly through there, but it, it's very difficult and you have a very like thin margin for error. If you do get that wrong, you've got to be looking to avoid those track limits because that you know in two hours you could rack up quite a few. Yes, very much the case. Going through the iconic uh, Hollywood and Craner curve corners, um, as we see Dean Riley in the number 22 for Simsport Solutions Noir. He's now going through the old hairpin. Uh, Steve and Haley sideways. Steve, as is more commonly known in these parts <laughs> when Mike Yao normally puts the hashtag up on the screen. Uh, he and his team teammate, well Jack Young was one that really stood out and he's at it again for the um the youngster in the Aston Martin who was on course for an AM victory last time out. Um, you know, had a massive drama. And you can see there there is uh and you can see one of the uh I think that's one of the wild thing uh McLarens that have just gone through. There's Jack Young. He's now actually switched. Oh, he's done a very sensible thing because he's gone with the torque monster, the McLaren 720S that your good partner in crime at Racing Cube, Adam Isola, which is also piloting, which you piloted for, uh, I think, the majority of the season until we got to Zandvoort and you decided, you know what, I'm going to give commentary a go and it's good <laughs> to have you alongside me uh, tonight, mate. Uh, no, I really, really appreciate it. But yeah, that, that's a very nice way of saying that <laughs> it all ended horribly for me. But um, for Jack Young, you know, I'm really surprised that he's actually changed from the Aston uh, to the McLaren, uh, kind of. Um, I think he did, had a really good performance in the Aston. I was hoping to see him here again, where maybe tyre pressure loss wouldn't be such of an issue. But he's gone for the McLaren. McLaren is famed here for its, uh, well, its time, it, you know, how good it is around here. So I'll be looking for a good result from the pro driver, Jack Young. Uh, sorry, the AM driver. Jack Young sitting, sitting currently in second place. Rich Smith, though, top in, the, top in the pole right now. Yeah, but look out for Corolla Supervicious. Now, he's only three tenths off of Rich Smith, and he's in one of the most unlikeliest of cars that we've seen this season. The Nissan GTR doesn't get a lot of love, does it? No, and I think it's because it requires a particular driving style um, than Nissan does. It, it can get quite a bit twitchy out of the corner. It's got so much torque on the low end that you've really got to tune the car that it's stable out of those uh, tight corners like the, t the last two happens. I think uh, he's, he's doing great right now. He's currently in fourth place. Pinchbeck's just, uh, well, Pinchbeck's just pinched that third place from him. Um, but I'm looking for more from Super Vicious. This is a great result for him so far. Yeah, Ross McGregor rounds out the top five as Chris Pinchbeck. Uh, hopefully, 
Uh, and it looks like uh, we've got some good people out there. Mike, uh, we've got Simply Race on there. Good evening. Aaron Van Droynen from uh, Sim Racing Hub International, obviously. Uh, there has been the clash of the communities over the past few weeks, which I think has just curtailed uh, this past Thursday night. Dean Riley has got some work to do. He's currently in 21st as the number 22 comes across the line. And it is a Sim Sports Solutions 1-2 with Rich Smith lead leading Dean Riley. Then it's Jack Young. But then, well, uh, hang on a second. Is that me? Or is that, I think I've just seen uh, that is Yannick Muller. He's just gone P1 in the Ferrari. Now, when you think about this, Aaron, the Ferrari has pretty much the same amount of torque or nigh on as the McLaren. And they're both mid-engined. Twin turbo, V8, rear wheel drive. These cars seem to be hooking up rather well and giving the Mercedes a run for their money. Yeah, I mean, I, that was a fantastic time by Yannick Muller. I think, I think the most important ingredient in that Ferrari is Yannick himself. Um, but Yannick, what a great drive from him. Just pit by a tenth. I think he's looking to do really well here. The conditions are good. We are looking at fast conditions here at Donington. They will improve over the course of time, though. But it's good weather. It's good conditions, which is a surprise. It is Donington. But, um, yeah, he's got that grip to put the time down. Yeah, Rich Smith, I'm hearing, is about four tenths up at the moment. So he could be the first driver to go sub one minute, 27 seconds. As now the McLaren goes across the line. I think that is Jack Young. Is now Rich Smith making his way through. And he's now going through the Melbourne hairpin. And that used to have the uh, that used to be a Foster's can uh, back in the day, back in the uh, early 2000s. But obviously due to uh, alcohol branding not allowed at circuits, it promptly was taken down. Rich Smith comes through Goddard's. And now goes down the weak cross straight. He's three tenths up. This is going to put him on pole as oh, one of the Sim Sports uh, racing cars goes out of the final corner and spins around. Rich Smith goes one minute, 26 point nine one six that's a brilliant lap time for rich smith and yannick muller finds himself nearly two and a half tenths of a second behind then it's dean riley regan mitchell uh jack young there's jesper peels in the number 229 honda nsx gt3 normally constructed by yaz motorsport in italy he's about four tenths up so this could put him towards the bottom part of the top 10 maybe even depose roberto santoro in the number 78 ferrari with that iconic uh at Italia livery. So here comes Jesper Peels across the line. That time, I don't think he... Well, his last lap was a 1 minute 28.0, but I think that lap was invalidated, so he would not have progressed up the order. No, that's a shame. That's an absolute shame for him. And I think it's very it's very easy to dirty Donington. There's one specific place, the S's, that is just, you know, victim, people fall victim to dirtying their laps right there. You can absolutely blaze the first and second sector, but going into that third sector, you can really end it all there just in one corner. Dean Riley, we're on board with here. I think Dean Riley and Rich Smith have got a lot to prove after, you know, beaching their Mercedes at Alton Park last week. I think that, you know, I think they're coming out with something to prove. Um, but we all know them in the SimSport community as very, very fast drivers. Indeed. And uh, Dean Riley goes P2. Look at the cap there. Six one thousandths of a second between the two SimSport solution cars as he runs wide, uh, going out of red gates and... Uh, Rally crossing. Ross McGregor is six tenths up now. He loses a couple of tenths, goes P4 behind Yannick Muller by exactly nine one hundredths of a second. So times are changing. Simon Crane looking good at the moment. He's P9 at the moment on exactly the same time as the 101 Nissan of Carolis Sipovicious. There is Simon Crane. He's on his outlap at the moment. So We've got just under half of the qualifying session still to go here, Aaron. This qualifying session could be anybody's, but if Simon Crane's in the top 10, if Ross McGregor can hustle that Bentley to within three and a half tenths of Rich Smith, this gives Simon Crane the best motivation that he needs. Absolutely. I mean, if you're looking at, if you're, if you're McGregor or Mitchell right now, you're licking your lips because, you know, that's the man you want to beat in uh, currently P10. I have to say, though, he's come out of the best time he possibly could. The track conditions have just turned to optimum. There's still a little bit left, uh, a little bit gri uh, uh, grip left to put on the track, but he's going to be able to put those mid 26s in, in that Bentley if he gets it right. Look, he's using all, if not all, the full, nearly four wheels on the grass there as he goes through the fast section. And um, I think that he's going to be on an absolute blind. He's got, like you said, just under 10 minutes left. This is the perfect time to get out in that Bentley. Yeah, he's decided to put his eggs all in one basket. He was at full commitment and full chat through Starkey's Bridge. Then it's just front's curve. 
Now he's going through Coppice on the run down to the Foggy S's. And uh, we'll just stay on board, pushing it over 220 kph, over 150 miles an hour down onto the brakes, down into third gear. Nigh on straight lining through the Foggy S's, down towards Melbourne Hairpin. And he's literally eking out as much performance out of this Bentley. Hard on the brakes, down to first gear, full right hand down. And that was about 70 kph on the apex there. He's really, really pushing hard. Simon Crane could throw the warning shot across the bow that everyone is not wanting, especially Messrs McGregor and Mitchell. Out of the final corner, through Goddard's, Simon Crane, will he improve on that particular lap time? Does not. But it's yeah. setting him up nicely for the next one as Miles Dixon now coming out of the pit lane. So Simon Crane on a mission here, Aaron. Yeah, no, it looked like he was on a fast lap there, but the, the, the positioning that he took coming out of that final hairpin, he went wide, he's giving himself a bit of extra run down through the first set, well, across the start finish line, down towards Redgate, that's what he's doing. People overtaking on the qualifying lap, that's not going to help anybody out. Jack Young on a flyer, super vicious in the Nissan, trying to do well, super vicious flashing him out the way. That Nissan is absolutely hauling, and he needs as good a position as possible to start with in that Nissan because it's a great defensive car, but on a, when you're on the offensive in the Nissan, it can be quite tricky. So he's going to want to get the best qualifying he can right now. Yeah, Corolla Supervicious came into this round 16th behind, behind uh, Monta, uh, Mantas Povilaitis. Stin Passpont still staying true to the Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. The Dutch driver currently down in 15th position, but the top 23 rounded out by Mark Neuterlings, covered by 1.6 seconds. Just under seven and a half minutes to go in this session. Jack Young looks like he's got the McLaren hooked up, up through Schwantz Curve into the right-hander at McLean's. He's four tenths up at the moment. There is Carolis Sipervicious going through the Melbourne hairpin. Uh, sorry, Sipervicious is four tenths up at this particular moment. So this could put him a little bit further up the order. Sebastian Tatolinet. So that could actually put him into the top five. Might even springboard past Ross McGregor. And that is what one thing that the number 15 does not want happening. Super Vicious out of the final corner goes P6. Oh, by 24 thousandths of a second, he misses out on fifth position as Mark Neuterlings goes a bit... Ex uh, no, that's the 177. My apologies there, uh, the Bentley. Uh, but Carole is super vicious, really winding up that Nissan to volume number 11 in the words of Spinal Tap. Yeah, I mean, I, I just pay dividends to all the drivers here at Simsport. It, it, it shows great camaraderie because at Donington, you know, the fast line through Redgate really requires you to kind of straddle the pit lane exit. And, you know, we're seeing all these drivers back up. They're not getting in the way so people can get their optimum line through the first corner. Great. I just want to yeah, you know, pay props to everybody that's doing that because it's really nice to see that um, out in this qualifying session. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of competing uh, behind the wheel with us here at uh, Simsport Racing, Aaron. Obviously, uh, congratulations on your recent success in GT4, I might add. <laughs> yeah, that's never happening again. <laughs> <laughs> you say that now, yeah. but lightning might strike twice for you, buddy. But uh, uh... <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Well, I'm, I mean, obviously, you can catch the next round of that with uh, Tim Fulbrook and David Russell next Wednesday. And obviously, we've got the, uh, well, it looks like Jack Young is, oh, now Jack Young's bringing a bit of McLaren uh, fire to the party with that 4-litre M840 twin-turbo V8. He's four-tenths up. This could put him at the sharp end of the grid and maybe give Rich Smith and Dean Riley something to think about. Yannick Miller rounds out the top three they're covered by 75 thousandths of a second i think on record since i started commentating with sim sport racing uh back in may of last year that is the closest qualifying session he's seven tenths up my goodness me jack young i think he's got a per is going to be close to a 26 5 let's see what it is it's a 26 5 5 6 for Jack Young, he's absolutely obliterated Rich Smith's time. Wow. I mean, that, are we hearing that Regan Mitchell's up on his time as well? I mean, that was three. absolutely three tenths up from Regan Mitchell right now. This is going to put him towards the top five. Is he going to pit Russell McGregor? He really needs to beat McGregor with his time right now. McGregor's still out on track. Less than five minutes to go. He just beats McGregor by less than a tenth. Six hundredths of a second there. Great job for Mitchell. But can we just can we just applaud the fact that Jack Young, we're gonna, we might actually see for the first time an AM driver taking pole position. 
Uh, yeah, and possibly an overall victory in GT3. That would be what that would be uh, stoning the uh, stoning the uh, stoning the crows, so to speak. And uh, Oliver Anderson says, uh, "Does the 101 guy?" <laughs> oh, he's talking about Carola Supervision saying the curse number. Is, is that in your honest experience, Oliver? That's the uh, that's the main <laughs> thing. Um, but yes, but Peels has done a really good job in the Honda. He's up into P9. Uh, your buddy Adam Misalovic rounding out the top 23. 1.85 seconds. Right, Ross McGregor could fire back at Regan Mitchell and also Chris Pinchbeck because McGregor's down in seventh. He was a tenth up just a second ago coming through the Melbourne hairpin. He goes across the line. He goes P2. Nice work by Ross McGregor. No, P3. Smith just beaten him. Smith just got him at the line three minutes to go. This is all to play for. <laughs> oh, these optimum conditions are really spicing up. Dean Riley's now a tenth up. If he gets another uh, another half a tenth or another tenth, he'll be in P2 once again. But no one seems to have a real answer for Jack Young at the moment with that storming. Um, he's just, uh, I think he's possibly lost a little bit of time through the final corner. He, yeah, he's had a 126.922. He's still got time for at least two to three more laps. Oh, moment there for McGregor. The left-hand side of the car starts stepping out, going through McLean's into Coppice. Ross McGregor is pushing Lat Bentley uh, to the limit of adhesion, and he's still got time to maybe have another couple of laps to see if he can uh, get past Jack Young for po provisional pole position. He's now going through the Fogarty S's, is McGregor, as Rich Smith now also circumnavigates his way through there. Smith. I think we just heard that Smith is two tenths up in his, uh, on, up in his lap time there. Aston Martin gets out of his way. The number 36 gets out of the way. No flashing lights needed as he goes through for the final hairpin. He's going to go through Goddard's. He's got to get a good run here. He's got two and a bit tenths to catch up Young. Can he do it? Is he going to take the AM driver off poor position in the in the Mercedes? It's going to be a difficult ask. Let's see what happens. He goes oh. across the line. Oh, 30 thousandths slower than Jack Young. Jack Young, young sir, you have been put on notice by Rich Smith from Sim Sport Solutions. We've got less than two minutes of this session to go. Uh, and Aaron Walker, thank you very much uh, for wishing everyone all the best of luck. Look at the way the Rich Smith just manhandled the Mercedes through the Craner curves into the right hander at the old airpin. One of the Sim Sport racing Ferraris uh, was definitely grass tracking there. Was it Dave Hedges or was it Steve uh, Haley? I'm not too sure, but. Dave Hedges all the way down in 22nd. Steve Haley down in 14th. Pinchbeck now uh, up by three tenths on his best lap time. This could put him ahead of Ross McGregor if we're not careful. We head into the last 90 seconds of the session. Pinchbeck looking to get a good run in the Aston Martin across the line. What's the time from Pinchy? Oh, 90,000 separate the top three. And Ross McGregor pushed to the outside of row two with just over a minute remaining in the session. Yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. Jack, uh, Jack Young, another temp up, 26.4 potentially for the young man, the young pro driver. Got to see what he's doing. Maybe it was a, I'm going to take back my words and probably eat them because it was a very sensible choice for him to go from the Aston to the McLaren, obviously. Have to notice as well, though, Pinchbeck from the Mercedes at Alton Park now to the Aston. So we're seeing some of these people that may find themselves out of contention in the championship swapping cars, maybe a bit of a test session, but it's not pulling away from the race and it's certainly not pulling away for this qualifying, qualifying right now. Yeah, Jack Young goes through the Fogarty S's. This is going to be his last... Uh chance at an opportunity to extend the gap over rich smith and now he goes through the melbourne hairpin nice and tidy for the mclaren 720s gt3 he powers out of melbourne heads towards goddard's and he might if he's lucky he might even get another lap in because look 10 seconds on the clock as he goes through goddard's he's two tenths up we're on course for a 126.3 what's the time 126.478 he loses about a tenth and a half through the final sector, but the check it is out for qualifying. And Jack Young, by the skin of his underpants, has just got pole position. That's the first ever and pole in this season. Well done, Jack Young. I doff my cap to thee. It's not over yet, though. It's not over yet. I mean, it could potentially be over, but we've still got McGregor out on track. 
Simon Crane hasn't answered the call from all these drivers. He's sitting in Blevin currently and Dixon and Haley. Crane is up in his line, up in his time by two tenths, but he's almost a second down off pole position. I don't think he's got enough in that Bentley to really reel that amount of time in. But he's going to have to get up up the order because the championship is all to play for. He has to beat Mitchell and he has to beat McGregor. Yeah, very much the case. Simon Crane now making his way through the Fogarty S's. Check it is out for the session. Miles Dixon still out. Martin Dergal has just crossed the line and will stay 21st. Lucas Centalis will not improve. Great showing by Denise Pope. Shout out for that lady. The number 79 from Wild Things Racing in the McLaren. She's put it P23. And that's her best qualifying session yet, I believe. But Simon Crane is the one that we're watching at the moment. He's now going to come through Goddard's. Let's see if he can stay a couple of tenths up because that will put him onto row five. Oh, P5 and ahead of Ross McGregor. Brilliantly done there by Simon Crane. Miles Dixon puts it P9. So, wow. <laughs> what a showing from uh, Pulse Simsport. They really, really nailed it right there and then. Yeah, there was, I can't believe there was so much time in his uh, in his his two hairpins, especially Goddard's. It looked like he got an absolute blinder out the last corner and managed to nail six tenths because we were on when it was two tenths, but six tenths. That's incredible. Yeah, one of the biggest things here is that uh, we have about five minutes until the um, until we get racing. We'll have a full formation lap around the two point five mile circuit here. Uh, at Donington Park. Uh, good evening to Reese Wigan. He said, evening, gents. Good luck uh, to all. And a shout out to Mark Noislings and Adam Isolovich. That's what this means uh, with the community, which is now at 792 members of this. Uh, good to see uh, Chris Pinchbeck's mum. Jean is back with us again. Good evening, Jean. Hope you're well. Um, come on, Pinchy. Make it your night. Good luck. Thumbs up. That's what we like about the, the camaraderie. And it's an extended family here at Simsport Racing, the place to race. Um, Oliver Anderson, I've never seen Simsport uh, before. Can you guys summarize the championship? Well, the thing is, um, Oliver, you can go to simsport-racing.com. Uh, I think that's .com, uh, which is, <laughs> I, I've said it so many times, I keep on forgetting. I've had a very, very busy week. Um, many clients have come out the woodwork. <laughs> simsportracing.com is the website you need to go to. You can find out further information about our respective championships. You can even join our Discord server. But there is your grid. And Aaron, I'm really excited. Are you, buddy? Oh, what a way to finish. What an absolute way to finish. And if you look at the conditions, what better way to go off in style? It is damp conditions <laughs> at the start of this race. I don't know how it's going to transpire. I can't see. Can't see into the future. It could get worse. It could get better. But we are starting on damp conditions. Now, this is going to test the, the guy's tunes. That McLaren is not going to have as much grip as it did. The Mercedes might come into its own. It's all to play for with these conditions. Yeah, very much the case. So, Jack Young will lead the field and there is quite a lot of machinery there and uh i'm rather excited damp conditions the wind has picked up to around four miles an hour that's six kph on the top right hand corner of your screen uh good to hear from paul Lindsay. he said that he'll be making a return to competition i'm really really glad to hear that paul we'd love to have you back racing with us once again, Simsport Racing, the place to race. Firstly, a big thank you to Simsport Solutions once again for providing uh, the broadcast this evening as we are set to get things underway. Um, but, Aaron, the big question I need to ask you, who are the dark horses that we're going to have to watch out for tonight? Well, I was really surprised. Yannick Muller came great in the early stage of that qualification, and then he kind of drifted off. Everyone started pulling in these mega lap times, didn't really see him pull his strings. And so I think that, you know, as a sole Ferrari in the top 10, I'm looking at Yannick Muller. You know, we don't want another Ben Ferrari chassis frame, right? We want to see him taking the podium place. I think he deserves that much. He's a, he's such a he's such a qualified driver in the sim sport world. Um, and I think that he he's, he's prime. He's in a prime place to get a top three. Well, obviously, the Ferraris had a lot of disasters at Alton Park. Yannick Muller was uh, not exactly uh, wanting to go near any barriers or any grass, and I'm sure that's <laughs> the case tonight here at Donington Park. So we are 90 seconds away. As you can see, it is Young that's going to lead the field away from Rich Smith. Chris Pinchbeck in the Aston Martin will be on P3. Yannick Muller in the Sol Ferrari in the top 10 will be lining up alongside the 43 Aston Martin. Simon Crane. One hand is on the title 
for not just him, but also for Pulse Simsport in the teams this evening as he will line up one against one of his chief rivals, Ross McGregor, in the same machinery, the Bentley Continental GT3. That is row three itself. Dean Riley and Regan Mitchell, that's row four. Miles Dixon and Carola Super Vicious in, the, Vicious in the highest place Nissan GTR Nismo GT3. That's row five, and thereby completes the top ten. Good showing by both Sebastian de Tolonera in the 330 Ferrari uh, and has Jesper Peels in the Honda NSX GT3 alongside. That's row six. Roberto Santoro and Stephen Haley make it an all Ferrari row seven ahead of Jackson, Mikus, Brandl, Paspon, Neutelings and Isalovic rounding out the top 20 as we are just under 30 seconds away for the drivers to be released and to get onto their formation lap. Martin Dergala, Lucas Zentalis and Denise Pope round out the top 23, but there is considerably lot on there. But um, just looking at all that machinery there on the picture in picture there, Aaron, <laughs> This it's frightening. is frightening. It is frightening. <laughs> now, you know from experience, uh, and so I'm going to ask you a question. This is the season finale. The drivers, especially the likes of Crane, McGregor, and Mitchell, they can't put a foot wrong tonight, can they? No, and I feel like the further the further down the pack they start in, the, the more they're putting them, endangering themselves. They're putting them in a, a position where anything can happen. Things can happen out of your control, which is the worst kind of things to happen. And I feel like, you know, for Mitchell, he, he almost 100% keeps his own nose clean, but you can't, you can't prevent everything from happening to you. I want to see him moving up the grid to challenge McGregor. McGregor's going to be challenging Crane, but none of these guys are going to be near Jack Young. This could be an absolute stellar drive for the guy in the McLaren here recently switched from the Aston Martin. I kind of feel like we're going to see our first and win, but, you know, two hours, no one knows. Absolutely no one knows. Yeah, it's a time for rolling the dice and see if you throw snake eyes or it's the lucky number seven. So the drivers making their way through the old hairpin. There's Jack Young, our first ever Am pole sister, I think, since I started commentating. Uh, and it was funny enough, it was GT3 season three at the Nürburgring, and I did the whole broadcast on my, uh, by myself, along with uh, Mike Yao from Simply Ra uh, SimSport Solutions. And then Steve proudly joined me in the commentary box. But it's good to have other people like yourself, Aaron. You know, driving's one thing, but talking about it is just as exciting, isn't it? Oh, for sure. And, it, and it, it, it's a different dimension. It, it's like you get all the excitement and none of the stress. That's how I look at it. You, you know, you're not driving the machinery. You like, you know, you can watch, you can watch whatever happens or whatever happens on the track, and you, it's just it's exciting to be involved just from like a I don't know like a Big Brother point of view, looking down on it all. It, it's a great experience. I would uh, encourage anybody to give it a go. Yeah, Aaron Walker's asking, where is Dave Hedges? Well, Drifter Dave uh, spoke to us briefly before the broadcast, and um, he said. You never know what it might be like with regards to the race tonight. Maybe the weather might bring something in. Well, Dave's quali qualifying wasn't exactly stellar this evening, so he's outside of the top 23. Uh, so hopefully if we can uh, scroll up the uh, timing tower on the left-hand side, if possible, to give you an idea of where everyone else is placed. But I think that is Dave Hedges, I think, in shot there, as you can see the likes of uh, Mike Markerstein. But we are ready to get racing. Who's your money on tonight, Aaron? Oh, I, I've got to, I've got to say Mitchell from eighth. Mitchell from eighth or Jack Young, just from the front. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask. I don't know. <laughs> well, don't ask, don't tell, as they say. Right, the field starts making its way through Goddard's. It is Young on pole. Rich Smith alongside Pinchbeck, Muller, Crane, McGregor, Riley, Mitchell, Dixon, De Tolonera. That is your top ten, ladies and gentlemen. Are we ready? Are we steady? It is time now to go green 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 for round five the season finale for season five as they all start heading their way down through into red gate rich smith trying to put it around the outside of jack young going through red gate as yellow oh. trying to go around the outside of chris pinchback and there is drama for muller in the leading ferrari after qualification and that's probably put him outside of the top 10 as they all filter their way down the craner curves for the first time jack young has got the advantage he needs. And it looks like Ross McGregor's already got himself up to third position in the uh, melee that happened between Pinchbeck 
and Muller on the first attempt going through Redgate. And it is a greasy track. So it went from damp to greasy. So there must have been a little bit of rain between the sessions. We are on a four-time server multiplier as the field filters its way through. There's McGregor. He's got Crane behind him. And it looks like he's got Dean Riley and Regan Mitchell for close company. Miles Dixon up from P9. And you can see that Crane's already battling away with Riley. This is not what Crane wants as they now go through the fog and TSs. They've got to nigh on straight line it. But as you said, track cut's very important. And it's probably going to be maybe uh, about 15 minutes before we really settle into the rhythm here tonight. Yeah, and some of these seasoned drivers, just go back to Redgate there. You don't want to be on the outside. It's not really an off-camber corner, but with greasy conditions and little grip in the tyres as, you know, as they do the warm-up lap, you, shouldn't want, you don't want to be on the outside. You want to be either, either on the inside or the middle lane. But on the outside, it's just asking for trouble. Lap one in the books. Jack Young leads from Rich Smith, Ross McGregor, Simon Crane, Dean Riley, Regan Mitchell, Miles Dixon, Caroli Supervicious, Ivaro Smickers, Roberto Santoro in the number 78. Up into 10th position, Yannick Muller now has to fight back. There's Miles Dixon. He's running wide, going through Hollywood as Supervicious going side by side with him in the Nissan. Through Crane the Curves and through into the old hairpin. Oh, he's gone. My oh, my goodness me. There's more dramas, more dramas. And that was Supervicious that exited stage left. That was on... But the biggest problem was is that the Nissan went firing off the circuit. So Sipa Vicious will now tumble down the order. I think Miles Dixon was a very, very lucky individual indeed. Uh, well, yeah, because Sipa Vicious was uh, literally horizontal there. Loss of grip, absolutely no grip in that Nissan. Again, they're not adhering to these track conditions. It's gone from greasy, you know, it's gone from down to greasy to green. There's no, there's no grip on this track right now. And the treat that is that it's, it's hot lap in sessions. They just got to calm, calm down. <laughs> yeah, very much the case. We're going to go to replay now. Look at what happens here through Craners into the old hairpin. Oh, the back end steps out on the right hand side. And that's why Super Vicious exited stage left before they even hit the apex. And it got beached in the kitty litter. But luckily enough, Super Vicious has managed to spin the 101 round. And um, Oliver Anderson, I think you have just jinxed him by what you put in the chat earlier on. That is not a commentator's curse. That is a chat comment curse right there and then. Uh, but Adam Isolovich now up into 13th place. Stephen Haley uh, is just behind him. Then it's Lucas Centalis in the sister car, the 102. But Jack Young doing a great job at the moment. But Rich Smith trying to close in on him. And Rich Smith has halved that gap to just under two and a half tenths of a second. As they go through the old hairpin, now up Starkey's Bridge, through into the fast left-hander at Schwanz Curve. Ross McGregor now factoring in, and he's looking every which way but loose to try and get past Rich Smith, not for the want of trying, going through McLean's, now into Coppice. Ross McGregor, I think if he's got another couple of laps, he might have a sniff of an opportunity up the inside of Rich Smith very soon for P2. Yeah, we know what Ross McGregor's capable of as well, as we saw him at Alton Park, you know, door banging around the last corner at Alton Park, you know, so we know we know what he's capable of and he can be quite mischievous. I think that Rich Smith has got he's gotta be seasoned here. He's gotta be he's gotta use his experience. He spent so much time at Donington recently. He wants a challenge for that first place of Jack Young, but he's also gotta fend off the likes of Ross McGregor. It's a tall order, but I think he can do it. Yeah, it's all a case of wait and see. And we're less than five minutes in. Jack Young still leading as we're about to complete the third lap of the race in the picture in picture. You can actually see the onboard from the driver's position for Ross McGregor in the number 15. But Simon Crane, all he needs to do is stay exactly where he is and he will stay at the head of the championship and take the title with one round remaining. Now, if anyone might remember at the first round at Brands Hatch, Crane and McGregor were on the front row and McGregor going through uh, Dingle Dell was pitched sideways as that is one of the neat, that is one of the Hondas off. I think that's yes, that's yes for Peels. He's just uh, absolutely tumbled down the order. So uh, Denise Pope running out the top 25. Jamie Peters Ennis, uh, Ennis now running out the top 30. And um, Jamie basically said that he's going to run his own race. Oh, there's a moment there. Oh, my goodness. That was De Toronera and Chris Pinchbeck. And that's not where you want it to happen, right into the path of the crane that curves, one of the fastest parts of the circuit. Disaster for both De Toronera and Pinchbeck in one fell swoop. It's still a green track. They need to calm it down, like you said, Aaron. 
Yeah, they're just it, it, it's 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 all hot headed right now. You know, it's the beginning of the race. I'm victim to it too. We're all humans. No one's perfect, mm -hmm. but it, you just you just want to get going. You want to get the best most position you can gained off the start there, and it's just causing casualties. And it's one of the most dangerous places to lose it as well. I think this is the replay. Um, is this the first lap replay? No, this is the replay of what we're going to see now because Corolla Superficious is ahead of them. And they were going through side by side through into the Craner curves. And Pinchbeck, I think, just got a little bit unsighted. And then all of a sudden, he's tangled with the back end. There's one of the Simsport Racing Ferraris. I think that's Stephen Haley has just gone wide coming out of uh, Goddard's there. As we're with Roberto Santoro in that. Now, that is one of the most iconic liveries in terms of rallying. <laughs> and it's on a Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo with Roberto Santoro. Uh, rounding out the top nine. Yannick Muller's firing back, though, on all, via, uh, on all eight cylinders with those twin turbos at the moment. He's catching Santoro and Mikas, and this battle is covered by just under eight-tenths of a second. You can see they're absolutely firing their way through into Schwantz's curve after a negotiating stock. He's really, that's a brilliant move from Roberto Santoro around the outside of McLean's as they head up to Coppice, and... Uh, Yannick Muller trying to do the same going through Coppice there. Has he got it done in the Ferrari? They're now going to go down towards the Fogarty S's. Yannick Muller's done it. And here comes Stain Passmont. Wow, some brilliant overtaking here tonight at Donington Park. Great job there. Passport having the trap position, didn't use it through the S's. What an absolute stellar drive from Santoro and Moller there. Just followed each other through there. Mick has got absolutely gobbled up. Gobbled up in that Nissa, uh, in that Aston Martin, sorry. And Passport is looking here. Mikas looks weak. He looks vulnerable. And this is a perfect opportunity for Passport to strike. Yeah, great moves. We waited for something to happen at the season finale. It might be a green track as now Muller goes side by side through the final corner with um, Roberto Santoro as they head down the wheat cross straight. And Yannick Muller yet to get past. They now go through into Redgate, down through Hollywood, into the Craner curves. This is Ferrari versus Ferrari. V8 twin turbo versus V8 twin turbo, producing around 700 newton meters of torque. Yannick Muller rides on the back bumper of Roberto Santoro, heading to the right-hander at the old hairpin. Santoro just a little bit wide. Muller's right on his exhaust pipes right now through Starkey's up to Schwanz. Yannick Muller, can he pull off the same audacious maneuver we saw just a lap ago? Well, I think with Roberto Santoro, as oh. Muller has a bit of a moment there. The back end steps out to the left-hand side through McLean's up into Coppice. Now the run down to the Fogarty Essex. Yannick Muller has got it all to do all over again. Yeah, what a great recovery drive from Yannick Muller, though. From being in the grass at Redgate to being challenging to get, you know, to, uh, to satisfy his place in the top 10 and keep moving forward. He's just got to be careful, though. Like you say, you know, that green Astro... Uh, McLean's, you don't want to be touching that in green conditions, Sunshine. He's going to do you no favours. So he's just got to keep his head screwed on. He's definitely got the pace over Santoro. And as his pack begins to uh, spread out a bit, he'll be able to make that opportunity uh, re more readily available to him. Very much the case. Two mandatory pit stops required for all competitors. If they don't do all two, it's a 130 second post-race penalty that will be automatically instigated by the software and the server. But Simon Crane doing exactly what he needs to do. It is about just keeping where he needs to be. And he still doesn't need, he doesn't need to beat McGregor and Mitchell out on track in terms of position. As long as he stays in the top 10, he's absolutely fine. Because the gap that he has got at this particular moment over Regan Mitchell. Okay, it's 69 points and then it's a further 40 points back to Ross McGregor. However, Crane's doing exactly what he needs to do. And what they say about winning a championship, Aaron, and this is very true, it is about consistency. Absolutely. And, you know, we're asking these drivers to be consistent for two hours. We haven't seen that yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll see it in the, in the later stage of this race. But over the course of the championship as well, like you said, Crane's doing the job. Mitchell, who's two places behind, Riley's really in the way. He's just, you know, he just needs to get out of the way. He, he won't want to because, you know, he's fighting for position. He wants the best result he can. But this is Mitchell versus Crane. Well, McGregor is up the road fighting with Rich Smith and Jack Young for the lead. Yeah. So just under an hour and 50 minutes uh, still to go here in the season five uh, finale here at Donington Park, which was originally meant to be Bathurst, but obviously Conosimilazioni and 505 Games decided to drop the British GT DLC 
and it's good to have that as a part of the calendar. So we still stay with Simon Crane, Rich Smith, and Regan Mitchell. There's Ivaris Mikas, Stain Passpont yet to get past in the triple four. Now you've worked alongside Stain Passpont uh, in the Fun Q Genetta G55s and GT4s. Um, Stin is a driver. He's 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 very composed, and when he's on fire, he really does uh, does really get going, doesn't he? Yeah, he's very methodical in his approach to, I would say, every championship, every individual race. You know, he spends time to kind of work through the car, you know, find a setup that works for him. Obviously, with the Ginettas, you know, I would we would we would work on tunes together. But ultimately, we'd always end up with, I think, different tunes and different setups because, you know, he's he's very comfortable in what he likes as a driver. He's the sole Lamborghini driver in, in this field. And he's doing really, really well for himself. I, I, I wish him all the very best. I think he's, I think he's definitely got the pace over Mikas for sure. And I'm pretty sure Mikas didn't Mikas win, or Mikas, Mikas, Mikas did well at Kyle Army. I think it was. I think Mikas has done well in uh, previous rounds to this. So it's a, it's a big surprise to see him. It's just trying to survive here in the top ten. Yeah. So at the moment, Jack Young leads on lap number eight of this race, nearly a second ahead of Rich Smith, Ross McGregor. Nigh on a further six tenths behind in third position as they're now starting to deal with back markers. And this is where things get interesting because the back marker traffic, we both know this, Aaron, it can give you dividends or it can be an absolute royal headache. Yeah, I mean, any traffic at any track can give you a headache. Uh, uh, but it, it, Donington in itself is, is a cause for concern because if you get stuck behind traffic, especially from, you know, Redgate to Coppice, there's really only one line. You don't want to be having to make excessive moves down the inside. We saw the Nissan where the lack of grip kind of, uh, you know, spun out down here. I, I, it, it's, it's difficult. You've got, you've got to kind of sit tight, sit behind, and kind of wait after Coppice, you know, that long straight before the S's. I think that's the opportune moment Ooh, there. Oh, and one person who's not, being, who's not being patient is Dean Riley. He's just managed to get through on the inside of Simon Crane. Uh, through McLean's, and there was a flash of the lights from Simon Clay, uh, Crane saying, uh, sorry, what was that? Uh, sort of, uh, that, that, well, the words to that effect, really, uh, let's put it politely here. Um, but that has given Regan Mitchell an opportunity to maybe get past, but the Bentley and the McLaren seem to be rather evenly matched. But then, for Simon Crane, here comes the cavalry, his teammate not too far behind Regan Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell needs his position. Like we said, Mitchell third, Crane first in the championship. He needs to get past Crane and some, but the biggest battle right now is for him to get past Crane, and Crane is going to be reeling from that from that overtake from Riley. I'd say fair game. I said I, I would say we've seen definitely worse at Alton Park. So you know Simon Crane's got a job in his hands, but he can't he can't start crying now. He's just going to get on with it. Yeah, exactly. It's just about concentrating at the job at hand. So he's going to have a replay now. This is through McLean's. A little bit of a touch between... Oh, now, Simon Crane, I don't know if the back end stepped out there, but there might have been a little bit of a touch from Dean Riley, possibly. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Dean Riley had uh, had made his intentions good and proper right there and then. So, Simon Crane, as you say, he's got to not bellyache. He's just got to get his head down, blinkers on, and just drive. Absolutely. I mean... We said it before, and I'll say it again. Trying to overtake for this, you know, the roller coaster section at Donington, you've got to be committed. And and if someone if someone's up the side of you, going side by side, and they've got track position on you, and and they've still got track position as you're going through Coppice or McLean's, you, you're better off just giving them position and fighting back at a later date because you're just going to lose absolutely more time if you if you're off if you're off the line, you know, where the grip is as as the track conditions move to fast and green. We've seen we've seen a cycle of conditions here right now. It eventually will move to optimum during the course of this two-hour race. But the grip is starting to build. That means that the likes of the Bentley will come really, really good for Simon Crane. And also, let's not forget Ross McGregor, who's currently in P3 at this particular moment in time. 15 minutes down, one hour and 45 still to go. No one yet to decide on whether they're going to make their first pit stop. But in this kind of uh, race situation here, Aaron, my instinct would be I might just load up the car with fuel and Regan Mitchell at the moment, um, you know, he's looking a bit faster than Simon Crane. And we know, we both know that the Bentleys have got the bigger fuel tanks, but they can go for a little bit longer as long as you're using the right traction control and uh, fuel map setting as well. 
Yeah, the Bentley certainly do have the advantage over the uh, over the kind of fuel uh, size that they can have on board the Bentley. Um, but I would say that it's it's two mandatory stops. You know, it's not it's a little bit different from the clash of the communities where you could pit for either or none, but you had to you know you had to just get to the end of the race. Mandatory pits require you to at least spend thirty seconds in each pit doing your tires, right? So. If I think for Riga Mitchell, it'd be very sensible to kind of fill up the tank. I think it would be sensible for anybody to fill up the tank at the beginning to a certain amount because, you know, you never know how the race is going to pan out. You might want to mm. go longer if you've got the pace. Yeah, Regan Mitchell swarming all over the back bumper of Simon Crane. Miles Dixon has now entered the fray. So um, Regan Mitchell is the Simsport Racing meet and a Pulse Simsport sandwich as they now make their way through into Goddard's and it's been a pretty good run from Simon Crane but you can just see a little bit uh, wide coming out of Goddard's but look at the battle between Jack Young and Rich Smith for the lead after 11 laps completed Rich Smith has not let Jack Young breathe one iota so far yeah that am driver is going to have to work his fingers to the bone for that champion for that for that win at Donington I mean he's in the car to do it he's put we we, we certainly know he's capable of putting the times in but Times are, times are kind of irrelevant. It's like you said before, Alex, it's consistency that wins, and it's certainly consistency that wins at Donington. So whoever's the most consistent driver will be the victorious one. Okay, a rundown of the top 20 with one hour, 42 minutes and 53 seconds of this race remaining. Jack Young leads from Rich Smith, and it's Ross McGregor rounding out the top three. Dean Riley in fourth. We're now with a battle for, si for fifth with Simon Crane, Regan Mitchell, Miles Dixon, and now the ever... Uh, the Ferrari ever charging forward of Yannick Muller in the 143. Regan Mitchell looking again, trying to go through to the Fogarty S's. No dice this time for the number 69 McLaren. And uh, on the picture oh. in picture, look, there's a massive dive up the inside through into the Melbourne hairpin. Regan Mitchell's got the inside line on Simon Crane. And now Miles Dixon senses an opportunity. So Regan Mitchell, is he going to get the run? towards Goddard's. No, he isn't because Simon Crane the, used the wide characteristics of the rear end of that Bentley to its maximum potential <laughs> going through Goddard's. I mean, if there was ever a car that was more perfectly suited for the wide load sticker, <laughs> it would be that <laughs> Bentley. It's so, so perfect. It's unbelievable. He should absolutely slam the door shot on Mitchell, who made a great move up the inside there. It has to be said into the first half and didn't quite make it stick through Goddard's. But I have to say here, Crane's tactical about this. He can really help his teammate Dixon in the Bentley just behind to kind of attack this McLaren. Get him off the rear bumper because then he can start flying away. Yannick Muller is just reeling all these three in because Simon Crane, he's just got to use his head a little bit more. Very much the case. I think uh, Simon Crane is probably hoping that Miles Dixon will be the escort vehicle for his wide load Bentley at this particular moment in time. Well, the escort vehicle is uh, trying to do rear gunner duty is now Jack Young really coming under salvo fire from Rich Smith as they go through the Fogarty S's. Now the short blast at over 230 kilometers an hour into the braking zone for the Melbourne hairpin. This is one of the slowest corners on the circuit, taking it around 70 kilometers an hour. That's 50 miles an hour in first gear. Short blast up to Goddard's the left-hand hairpin that brings them back onto the wheat cross straight. Jack Young at the moment still, as we're about to complete lap number 13, has done a fantastic job so far. He's put in the pole position time, the first ever and pole position holder in Simsport racing history from my recollection. And he's got Rich Smith breathing down his tailpipes. Yeah, absolute, uh, you know, commendations to both those drivers, actually. You, we've seen them at the front. They're very close, but they're not really battling with each other. It's more like tailgating. They're extending their distance, as you can see from McGregor, who was right up the tailpipe of uh, Rich Smith towards the early, earlier parts of this race. He's now nearly three seconds behind. So these two guys at the front are working together. That's great for them. And then they can duke it out later. Yeah, Yannick Muller really looking to carpe diem. Sees the day, trying to get past... Uh, Miles Dixon, he's right on the back bumper going through the exit of the old hairpin through Starkey's up the left hander at Strunt's curve. Yannick Muller looking to springboard his way past Miles Dixon for seventh position, but at the moment, no dice yet. The Ferrari gets a better run coming out of McLean's into Coppice. Yannick Muller, is he going to try and go for it? Not this time, as Regan Mitchell trying to find his way past on the exit of Coppice, side by side between him and Simon Crane. And Regan Mitchell has powered past, and he's going to get the inside run for the Fogarty S's. Well timed by Regan Mitchell in the McLaren 720S. 
That was a fantastic move. Position perfectly. Uh, great job from Crane as well. To think just to, just to you know tuck in behind. No need to go too wide there, especially when the two guys but, but, you know behind you are battling as well, very very closely. So uh, great job there from Crane. He's not over and done with though. As they go towards Goddard's, he's looking feisty again. I think Mitchell's got trap position though. Yeah, really comfortably. A couple of car lengths on uh, Crane there. And I think that Mitchell he's he's got to just you know. But, Pull his sleeves up. Go, go to work, man. You've got, you know, four seconds to Dean Riley ahead. He's got the pace in that McLaren. Go to it. I think in the uh, the words in casting normally used, if it's not roll your sleeves up, it's elbows out. And that's what Mark <laughs> Neutlings has got right now because he's currently in 13th in the Team Parker Racing livery Bentley run by Scott Mulvan last year who, with uh, that team now making the switch to the Porsche 911 for 2021. He's got Steve Haley. Great work by Dave Hedges out of the top 25, now into P15 behind his Simsport Racing teammates. As uh, Haley getting rather feisty, looking one way, then the other, through Redgate, then through Hollywood, down into the Craner Curves. Carolla Sipovicious, after his tank slapper of a moment, going through into the old hairpin earlier on with a back end stepped out to the right hand side, broke traction and put Sipovicious, the, the Lithuanian, into the gravel on the approach into the old hairpin before he lit up the rear tyres and got the car back out on the circuit. Looks like Denise Pope is chasing him down. Denise Pope in the top 20. She's currently running in 19th, and she's ahead of the 229 Honda of Jesper Peels, and they're battling away over 19th position. Yeah, great result for Denise Pope. Yeah, she had a great Pope at Alton Park as well. Uh, and she's just building confidence. Love to see her in the next championship, see what she can pull out uh, as part of the Wild, uh, Wild Things racing team. Uh, no sign of Pinchbeck, who started in the top 10 of this race there. So disaster for him. Also for Sipper Vicious, down from, I think he was 11th to 18th. And like you, like you mentioned, yes, for Peels in 20th. Not good for him either. Simon Crane is now actually unlocked. Miles Dixon and Yannick Muller. So Simon Crane has gone in early in for his first pit stop. I think his tactics are keep the car lightly fueled and then for the second pit stop fill it uh, as high as you need to at the absolute maximum have maybe four to five liters in reserve there is simon crane and this is now where the chapters start to unfold in season five we are one hour 36 minutes and 55 seconds away from the final checkered flag of this season and when we do have further news of further championships, which will include a return for GT3, I'm sure, which will normally be on Sunday nights. Um, I'm rather looking forward to that. But Jack Young still battling away. Rich Smith is still hot on his heels. And Ross McGregor, I see here, has got the gap down to less than two seconds from him and Rich Smith in the battle for second position, which could bring Ross McGregor into the fight for the race victory. Yeah, Alex, I'm not sure I'm entirely confident with Simon Crane's decision to pit this early. I mean, if you're trying to leapfrog people into the pits, right, it's a big, it, it's, a, it's a very, I would say, kind of medium-sized circuit, only two miles in size, in length. And I, I, I think wherever you're going to come out, out of the pits, you're always going to be in traffic. Um, so I'm not entirely confident with his decision to pit right now. You know, if you if you, if you go for a splash and dash, um, with with t with tires you have to make you have to make sure you put at least 30 to maximize it so you have to put 30 uh seconds worth of fuel in your car and a liter works out around two tenths so unless that bentley's really thirsty i think he's kind of short-handed himself a little bit yeah probably uh one short of a six pack as oh bit of argy bargy there between <laughs> dave hedges and mark noislings and we know that mark noislings does not like that kind of jocularity there dave hedges uh, <laughs> that was going through uh, Redgate and into Hollywood. Oh, sideways, Steve has emerged this evening, ladies and gentlemen. He went completely off track, going through the old hairpin. And now his teammate, Dave Hedges, goes around the outside doing the old M&M trick there, going through Schrantz Curve. And then uh, Neuslings gets through. And that was coming through McLean's. But then Hedges looking to fire one back up the inside, goes straight through. And... Uh, is that that's Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald? He's been like a silent assassin in that uh, that um, Bumblebee style uh, livery on that Ferrari. As Mark Neutling's looking to get past Stephen Haley, it was that, uh, so sideways. Steve emerged. When is Drifter Dave going to show his wares? It might be somewhere, possibly like McLean's and Coppice, where 
you're not having to go through. But oh, oh my goodness. Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald went banzaiing up the inside of Mark Neuterlings and caught out Steve Haley. So Steve Haley gets the rough end of the stick, courtesy of another Ferrari, Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald, the second highest, the second highest placed AM driver in this race, has just come a cropper at the Melbourne hairpin. Yeah, that was really unfortunate for him. I feel so sorry for Mark Neuterlings, who just got happy slap by David. Oh, no. <laughs> you did not, you did not say that. You did not just say happy slaps on commentary. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at the replay uh, whilst you can't compose yourself. Now, look, here's the move from Luke Hannon Fitzgerald. Steamrolls up the inside, goes past Neuterlings. haley has gone through. Oh! oh. Hannon Fitzgerald just outbreaked himself there, Spin lights up the rear tyres and spins the car round, and he loses a position to Carolis Sipovicius. That was a real shame right there for Luke Hannon Fitzgerald. I think he just... He could have left that maybe another lap or two, and it would have probably been a lot easier to get past Mark Neutlings and not hit Stephen Haley in the process. Yeah, especially when Neutlings might have been a little bit, uh, you know, his feathers might have been rustled there. He was a bit, uh, he, he didn't have his composure because he's got two Ferraris around him sliding all over the place. You know, maybe, maybe just wait, maybe till the next lap. I mean, I can understand completely from uh, Luke Hannon's Fitzgerald's point of view why that was a good opportunity, but he's really come out and had a cropper there. It's just completely kind of ruined his race there he's just got to get back in the mind frame still an hour and 32 minutes to go meanwhile though meanwhile we're talking about this i think i think uh yannick muller has got past dixon who is the other paul simsworth driver yeah well dixon's in the pit lane he's now uh dropping out of the top seven so roberto santoro in the 78 um sim racing legends car now takes p7 dixon's about to fall out of the top 10 because Adam Iselovic is about 15.4 seconds from his position. It's now happened, and there is another driver going into the pit lane, Sebastian Totolanera. There's Lucas Centalis in the number twenty, in the number one zero two. So quite a few drivers looking to pit earlier, and I think that might be just behind. That might be Efren Dafas as Centalis goes very wide coming out of Goddard's in the Nissan, and it doesn't look like Zentalis is 100% happy, but look behind. You've got the two leaders. They're coming up to lap these guys, and it's not going to be easy for either the, either of them because Evan Dafas wants to get past, and Lucas Zentalis wants to stay exactly where he, is, where he is and stay on the lead lap. Yeah, I mean, if you're McGregor right now, you can see lap tra traffic ahead of the, the leading two. Um, you're, you're laughing right now. You can use this to your advantage. You can plan your strategy, you know, get the space, get the run. Make I would plan for the S's if I, if I was a Ross McGregor um, because if they get really slowed up towards the S's, you can absolutely blind it through there. Maybe even take a track limit. Not not advocating that, but take a track limit there and uh, speed pa speed right, uh, right past them and get them get the run into uh, the first hairpin. Yeah, very, very true. We're getting towards the completion of the first 30 minutes of this two-hour season five finale. Round six out of six. It has been an absolutely Herculean effort by all drivers so far to keep it cool as there was a bit of a sideways moment in the Nissan from Lucas Centalis and Evan Dafas uh, looking for a way past in the number 74. Wild Things McLaren 720S GT3. More drivers going in the pit. It's Mike Markerstein, Stephen Haley, Ivarus Mikus um, now going in for their first pit stop. And some drivers might do the initial first pit stop like we're seeing, you know, first half hour gone, get in the pits, maybe get a set, fresher set, uh, fresher set of tyres on the car or maybe decide to fuel the car up. And if you've not got a, a lot of degradation on that first set of tyres, maybe run it until the second pit stop phase and then put uh, a new sharp pair of uh, tyres on for sec, um, you know, so effectively some drivers could really, really pay dividends by maybe getting themselves up the order in terms of maybe putting another set of tyres on, on each pit stop, but that can compromise you with the amount of time that you're in the box there, Aaron. Yeah, and the, the, only th the only thing I can think of why these people are pitting so early, it's less less about fuel and more to do with tyres, especially when they started on damp, then it went, was it damp, greasy, and then it went green, is the graining that the tyres would have gone through initially. Because even though it's gone to fast conditions, your tyres have then got that grain, right? So you're losing time that way. So maybe putting a fresh set of tyres on 
in fast conditions will then help you gain that time back because it's, it's, I would say you're not going to get that much grain from fast to optimum conditions if we do indeed see it go to optimum. So but that's the only reason I could think why. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect these drivers to put minimal fuel in for a really short stint at the beginning whilst you're battling because you're losing time whilst you're battling. I, I would I would rather do a splashing dash towards the end where the packs spread out a little bit. So it's very interesting to see what these drivers are doing, but I think it's more to do with tyres and the fuel. Yeah, Luke Hanlon, Fitzgerald, and Jamie Peters Ennis both in the pit lane. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. I think with one of the other benefits, I mean, I know it's you know having more fuel on board, especially with the amount of liters that you can put in a particular car. Sometimes that can actually help with the center of gravity. So as the fuel light load lightens, your car will get quicker. But in some respects, that's probably assisted with your traction to keep the thing, keep the car consistent during the initial phases. So some of these drivers will go for that longer first stint. Yeah, and also if you like you say about you know the uh, the amount of fuel when it, when you've got a lot of fuel in the car, it feels obviously it feels heavy, but it also feels like really stable, low center of gravity. Once you start to burn that fuel in certain cars, if you don't have it set up right, it will become super responsive, almost to the point where it's oversteering and twitchy and becomes really unstable. So you know, like we're seeing Adam Mitsilovic here, like he's got the same he has the same disposition as me, where I do really well in racing and not do so well in qualifying. Because it becomes super twitchy, and I always tune for the race rather than the qualifying setup. Um, so, you know, you'll see that with a lot. Oh, is that someone off there? Who's that off? That's another McLaren off there. That, that was. That was not Regan Mitchell. That would have been a bit further down the order. So, probably one of the uh, back markers that would have been uh, coming a cropper out of the exit of the old hairpin. So, that's not where you want to have a moment. Uh, just ask, ask Stephen Haley about that one uh, from a few laps ago. <laughs> um, but Adam Isolovich being uh, uh, the good thing is, is that um, that is a case that Dave Hedges now closing on Isolovich. This is the battle for effectively ninth position at the moment. But these two have yet to make a pit stop. And you can see that all of the top 12 will actually make that the top 16 all the way down to the. Uh, so these drivers really are eking out as much from these uh, these liters of fuel. And some of them, as I said earlier on, you know, traction control setting will be at the minimum to mitigate the amount of fuel that you're burning off. And especially if you put the power down going through a bit early on an apex as Dave Hedges now uh, exits his exit stage left and goes into the pit lane for his first some drivers will want to make sure that they've got the utmost amount of traction, but using like the, you know, map one where it's going to be the, the basic setting that is going to be the most um, economical route of saving fuel, but still being able to push to within half a second of your best uh, race pace lap time, if you will. Yeah, and, and, and some of these uh, some of these cars definitely have that option. I have to say the Ferrari put it into map three. That's kind of like a race map. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit off. I think it's like a couple of tenths off quality, which is map one. But um, you get, you just, it becomes more economic, you know. And obviously, with that, with that lighter load, because you're, you, because you're using less fuel per lap, you can have that lighter load, and therefore the lap time averages are quicker. And it's the same for the Mercedes, actually. You go map one to map two, you, you're going to be two or three tenths difference between those maps, and that's also a bit, a, a bit a key strategy to the Mercedes um, as well, especially in these two-hour or longer races. If you can save fuel, you are ultimately, you know, you could, you could, you could be looking to calculate to save a pit stop, especially in endurance races. Well, Jack Young having a bit of a tail happy moment there in the McLaren, going through old hairpin. That's allowed Rich Smith to try and go up the inside, and he's going for it. Oh, round towards McLean's. Rich Smith trying to keep it pinned around the outside. Has he got the job done? They're going to go up the hill towards Coppice. Rich Smith, I think, has now got the lead. And he has done on lap number 24 through Coppice after that massive mistake from Jack Young that has cost him. Uh, but there's still an hour and 25 minutes left to go. Don't count good old Jack Young out yet. I mean, they've been nose to tail for 35 minutes, right? He puts one toe, one toe out of line, and Rich Smith is there to gobble it up. He's taken the lead of this race. I think, you know, Jack Young, he's got a, he's got a big job ahead of him. Rich Smith has been there all that time. He's not put a foot wrong. McGregor, at the same time, has not actually gained any more from that two and a half second gap that he's got. Maybe we're going to see, maybe we're going to see uh, Young drop off here slightly. What a move around the outside, though. 
out of Clean McLean's. It is a great move if you can make it stick. You have to have track position, which it doesn't look like there. But as we go to this camera over um, Coppice, he it looks like Jack Young maybe have let off there, giving him the room to get that apex. So it's great awareness there from Jack Young as well. Yeah, incredible, incredible battling for the first 35 minutes of the race. Dean Riley now pits. Adam Salovich has now pitted and now exits pit lane and uh, nearly has Yannick Muller for close company as Muller just goes through red gate because the exit from the pit lane is right into the firing line at red gate. And Ma Yannick Muller, we both know here, Aaron was at full send when he went through. Yeah, he's back to fifth place right now. Dean Riley going into the pits, and he is reeling everybody in. Uh, it, what a great performance here. I mean, Santoro is just behind. I think Santoro is just behind him. Uh, the Ferrari is coming good at the last stage of this race. We've seen Dave Hedges, Stephen Haley making their way through uh, up into the top 20. But Yannick Muller is absolutely flying, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him on the back of Mitchell very, very soon. Yeah, interesting. I've just had a look on the YouTube chat. Uh, Panzer said, uh, listening to uh, Evan Daffas' stream, that they actually have to change tyres twice, uh, apparently. So uh, that's a very interesting development. So everyone will be on sharp boots for the first few laps before they start dropping off, as there's Roberto Santoro. Uh, and that looks like the SimSport racing pairing of both Dave Hedges and Stephen Haley just behind. So Santoro... Still has yet to have his first pit stop at this particular moment in time. However, it's all a case of when people decide to roll the dice. Uh, Jesper Peels now pits from P13 behind Denise Pope, who's still staying out. But at the moment, uh, those drivers as all. Well. Now, someone's had a massive off, and that was coming through, I think, the Fogarty S's. I believe. So someone's had a massive moment. It's taken out one of these signage barriers on the exit as Hedges and Haley are line of stern. They're battling over 18th position <laughs> and Roberto Santoro is a lap ahead of them at the moment. So Santoro's done a really good job so far in the number 78 uh, Alitalia liveried Ferrari 488 GT3. Um, but still, 26 laps in, quite a few drivers. Uh, the top eight, rounded out by Mark Neutlings and the 666 Bentley, have yet to serve their first mandatory pit stop. Now, this is very interesting, and this is probably one of the uh, one of the drawbacks of pitting early, especially around a two in a two-hour race. Is if you've got the pace of a people that you're tro you know that there are a lap ahead of you, you've got to obey blue flags. So you've really, you've really got to clearly demonstrate the fact that you have that pace over them, that they recognize that and move out of the way. As you can see, both the teammates, Dave Hedges and Stephen Haley, you know, they, they've got to make it clear, abundantly clear to Santoro that they have the pace in that Ferrari. Otherwise, he doesn't have to let them pass. So all this time that they've you all this time that they've come, you, you know, they've come, had an early pit, and then there's all this time now is going to be wasted because they're not going to be able to use a fresh tire to just put on the track on the car. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, Rich Smith now in the pit lane. So he serves his first mandatory pit stop. Ranjif Kelsey, a SimSport, a SimSport Racing's, uh, this is his designation, by the way, his quote. Uh, he is considered the SimSport Racing official Ferrari works driver. That always makes me giggle every time I try and say that on commentary whilst, uh, whilst not trying to break out in a grin like the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, he's now in the pits as well. But there's Ross McGregor. And Ross McGregor can make some headway here now as well uh, in terms of positioning because uh, he's not that far behind uh, Jack Young, who is still out in the lead of this race after that great battle between him and Rich Smith. Rich Smith has now exited pit lane in sixth position. The, um, the cards haven't been laid on the table quite yet uh, and fully, I would say, Aaron. No, I think everything is still to play for. As we can see that the uh, track has now gone from fast to optimum conditions. We've spoken about, you know, the advantage that the Bentley has over fuel. And it's going to be really interesting to see when McGregor actually goes for the pit. I think he may, might wait until he, and, and see if he can catch uh, Young. And if he done, does catch Young, I think that's when he'll pit. I think when he's in his stride, he'll pit. He doesn't want to lose any time on track. He's going to make sure he gets his pit lane right. It's very, very easy to get a stop and go here uh, and uh, speed through the pit lane because it's such a very short exit and entrance. Yeah, and here comes Roberto Santoro as Regan Mitchell and Yannick Muller have both opted to pit. 
So things are changing. And also, Simon Crane currently in 11th position at the moment. So his uh, decision to stop early, I'm wondering if he's actually doing a longer middle stint. Because, like, the amount of people that are now pitting after around about 40 minutes. Um, and uh, there is uh, Rich Smith in the actual picture in picture there. Uh, sorry, Rich Smith is on the screen, but that's Simon Crane actually in uh, Crane is, that is in the picture in picture. Um, you know, it might not be a bad strategy call after all for Simon Crane because if he decides to do the long stint in the middle and he's put a bit more fuel in the Bentley, he might have played this uh, rather fortuitously. Yeah, I think it's also worthy to note as well, Alex, is that someone said in the YouTube chat that they have to take two uh, it's mandatory for them to take two tire sets so there ineffectively isn't really any kind of splash and dash strategy because you have to spend at least 30 minutes or th sorry 30 seconds changing your tires so i mean oh, it, it's very difficult i don't i think if you're gonna go out and do a longer stint in the middle you're only gonna kind of hamper yourself because your tires are going to wear more and you're going to lose a little bit less grip and it's going to affect your it's going to affect your lap time so i can't really see this benefiting them and for me if everything's if everything's clear ahead of you i would just go 40 minutes pit 40 minutes pit and then do another 40 minutes then you're getting like optimum grip from the tires yeah a bit like doing a 30 30 30 stint yeah. pace in a 90 minute race as mark neutling's uh, now has. Uh, that is Dean Riley that's just gone up the inside of the Bentley. So Mark Neuslings always likes to uh, stretch things out a bit in terms of the stints. And uh, in some respects with the Bentley, you know, he's done a very, very good call. But obviously with over now, what is that, 42 minutes behind the wheel of that Bentley, those tyres will start dropping off a little bit. Yeah, I think he likes worn tyres because I distinctly remember him doing the same sort of strategy at Zandvoort. He was probably the last person to pit uh, in the Zandvoort race. I think that was round three. And, um, he, he, you know, the way things are going, he's going to be the last one to take his first pit. You know, he's, he's just co costing himself time. I think, it, you know, just slide that Bentley into the pits, man. It's not going to cost you anything apart from the 30 seconds. It's going to cost you to change your tyres and you get fresh rubber. So it's a win-win. So Ross McGregor has overtaken Jack Young, but now McGregor is in the pit lane. So the top four will have made their mandatory first pit stop. We have just over an hour and 16 minutes and 50 seconds still to go. McGregor, after, th well, what is going to be effectively lap 30, is currently in the lead, but then that will be taken by Rich Smith. He's got Jack Young just behind him. Dean Riley, uh, then Mark Neuterling's the highest of the drivers that have yet to make a pit stop. Also factor into that in 11th position, Denise Pope in the number 79, Wild Things McLaren 720S. She is still out on track for nearly 45 minutes in that McLaren. And uh, there she is in the picture in picture going through into the Fogarty S's. What an epic drive. Her consistency has started to really showcase it, its hand. And it looks like she's rather enjoying herself out on the track at the moment. I think McGregor's just come out in front of Smith. He has. McGregor's taken the lead of this race. Sorry, uh, sorry, Alex. I was... I was just absolutely focused on seeing that Bentley in the pit lane. It wasn't there. It's already come out ahead. And it's ahead of Rich Smith and Jack Young. So he has absolutely smashed that first pit stop there. And he has taken the lead of this race. Well, who'd have put that in the uh, in the story tonight? Well, we definitely wouldn't have. We couldn't have really scripted anything that has happened so far. So Ross McGregor, with just over an hour and 15 minutes remaining, has Rich Smith closing in on him. And there is Jack Young, the highest of the Am place drivers. So the battle well and truly on. And in the picture in picture, we've got the onboard from Rich Smith as he's trying to hunt down Ross McGregor. The Scotsman doing a fantastic job in the Sancho Simsport Racing Bentley Continental GT3. And this is where things now start to unravel as they've got a couple of Ferraris just up ahead. It's the uh, it's Shumi Get Well Soon pairing I've just seen, judging by the livery that they've got there. And uh, McGregor just has to keep a cool head here through backmarker traffic. I mean, McGregor's got all sorts of problems. I know he's just come out, but he is, his tyres are not going to be up to optimum grip levels right now. This is a perfect opportunity for Rich Smith to get through. The other Ferrari moves out of the way. The Bentley just cuts across to get the optimum racing line through Redgate. 
Rich Smith taking the shorter line, but he's going to have the grip in that Mercedes. And we've seen from the consistency of Rich Smith that he's no joke. He's going to sit, he's going to sit on your tailpipe all day long until you crumble. So Ross McGregor has got an absolute battle on his hands now to keep that a lead. All he needs to do, Ross McGregor, is just ask Jack Young what it was like for 35 minutes. <laughs> then he'll get a real good, uh, real, real good inkling and understanding. Mark Noislings from P6 now pits. So nice things will drop out of the top 10. This will promote Simon Crane up into eighth position. So Simon Crane doing exactly what he needs to do and not make any mistakes. So, yeah. and that will mean that Denise Pope will now end up in the top 10. Absolutely spirited drive uh, from the uh, Northamptonshire based sim racer. She's done a fantastic job so far and she's uh, about three seconds behind Roberto Santoro in the uh, Alitalia liveried uh, Ferrari and you can just see down below that's the battle for the lead Ross McGregor versus Rich Smith going through the Melbourne hairpin Jack Young has got the ringside seat absolutely and I have to I have to ask Alex because I, it's a question I'm asking myself but I don't have these drivers actually noticed that the temperature is coming down so we're at optimum grip levels but in the last what 20 minutes Maybe it's the track is the track has like decreased two degrees in track temperature. It's now at 15 degrees. How much colder is this going to get? And have the drivers anticipated this because they've had to they would have have to alter their PSIs to adjust to get that grip from the car. Well, considering in qualifying, Aaron, it was eight degrees hotter on the track temp. It was 23 degrees Celsius, and because we've got a four time uh, times server multiplier. The biggest thing here is now how quickly is it going to get dark? It's getting dark. Now what this will do is that the tires will end up going colder. And one of the biggest things that you'll have during uh, this kind of phase is that as the track temperature and the air temperature drops, the tire pressures will also suffer as a direct result. Yeah, also the brakes as well. If these drivers have not factored in, you know, it not factored in the, the, the temperature loss during this race, they could end up with really cold brakes uh, through the long straights. It would affect their braking performance, especially uh, through the last two hairpins uh, uh, as they go through the S's as well. They've got, to, they've got to factor this in. You know, they're not going to have that same braking performance if they didn't consider this. You know, they, 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 they might have been overheat. That I think the best strategy would have been to maybe lower the brake ducts <laughs> So, uh, you, you know, you're overheating towards the beginning while all the commotion's going on. But as the track begins to cool and it begins to spread out, this is where you want that break in performance. Yeah, very much the case. Good evening to another Pulse SimSport alumni that's watching, Glenn Guest. Where does Simon have to finish to uh, take the championship currently? Well, with the way things are at the moment, I'm just going to have a quick calculation because I've now got to bring up the points. Got oh, more work to do whilst I'm commentating. It isn't enough talking into a microphone. I've now got to do some calculations. Calculator at the ready, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> but that's part and parcel. I think um, I'm going to have a quick look. But, um, you know, the track temperature, the air temperature hasn't really changed that much. It's gone down by a degree here, Aaron. But the tyre pressures are going to be the most crucial thing. But also, hitting the curves. We've seen that in other tracks, like Alton Park. People were... You know, both GT3 as well. Now, there was a massive moment for a backmarker just up ahead. And that was the 737 Porsche. The, you know, if you hit too much of the curbs here, okay, even though they're not as exaggerated here at Donington Park, you can still come into problems. Oh, as Smith. there is there's a, so there's a massive moment there for Rich Smith. And that has allowed Jack Young to get up to the inside. And that was the 737 Porsche that was just up ahead that compromised Rich Smith. And he lost ground to Ross McGregor. So now Jack Young seizes an sees an opportunity. And uh, we've now got uh, Jack Young's on board in the picture in picture. Yeah, uh, what a lifeline for Ross McGregor here. I mean, you really can't choose your time to overtake uh, these uh, bat markers or lap traffic. But what a time to do it in the, in the last two hairpins. He got through. Rich Smith trying to follow him through. Didn't have the same success. Nearly got loose on the way out. Could have found himself so easily in the tyre barrier. And uh, Jack Young could have uh, easily taken that second place straight off him. No problem. But uh, great driving from Rich Smith. Lost a couple of car lengths to the back of Ross McGregor. But plenty and plenty of time to gain that back. Over an hour left to go. 
Yeah, so just doing some calculations on my notepad at the moment. So coming into this round, Simon Crane, uh, don't worry about that uh, on the uh, on that, Glenn. Um, it's not a problem, mate. It's part and parcel of the job of being a commentator. Um, so uh, please bear with us. We might have some slight sound issues, I understand, on our stream. Um, I'm not too sure if it is your phone, Chris Pinchbeck. Your guess is as good as mine, but hopefully we might be able to get something sorted out. Um, so um, 5.13 for Simon Crane, 4.54 for Regan Mitchell, Ross McGregor, 4.14. So if things were to stand as they are now, it's 220 points for a win, which would put Ross McGregor on 600 and 34 points regan mitchell currently sixth that is 140 points and this would change things a bit dramatically okay get this aaron 454 plus 140 that is 594 points which would put ross mcgregor second in the standings but simon crane currently sitting in ninth position is on 128 points Five, uh, that's 641. Simon Crane needs to finish where he is. Well, he can finish 10th and still take the title if Ross McGregor wins. It's not enough. You know what it, it needs? <laughs> it needs someone. Uh, 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 you know, it needs for Simon Crane to be 11th. Because if he is 11th, Ross McGregor would pick up the title by one point. I mean, Denise Pope, current, currently sitting in 10th place, yet to take a pitch. She won't be there. She won't be our resident 10th place. I think it's going to be Stain Passpont. And uh, St Stain's a, you know, a good way back from Simon Crane. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take divine intervention. You don't pray, on, you don't pray illness towards any driver, but it's, I think it's going to take something extraordinary to knock Simon Crane from the knife downwards, but you never know. They've got to take another pit. You've got an hour worth of racing. The track temperature's coming down. Have these guys practice nighttime driving here? Are we going to see nighttime driving? These are all of the questions that could really factor in to, for, for, you know, for something to happen to Simon Crane. Yeah, very much the case as we're fast approaching the halfway point of this race. One hour, six minutes and 57 seconds plus and, uh, whatever might be left of the final lap to bring us home here in Season 5 GT3. Alex Goldschmidt and Aaron Martin Pilkington, your commentators this evening. And one of the biggest things here, there's Yannick Muller up to P5. He's got Regan Mitchell trying to chase him down, but at the moment Regan Mitchell is a bit in the doldrums. He needs to pick up the pace as the two Getwell Shumi Ferraris, get well soon, uh, Shumi Getwell soon Ferraris, behind him are uh, basically battling between themselves. Uh, but, you know, there's still plenty of time left. I think you, you said about Yannick Muller, if he hadn't have had that moment off of Redgate with Chris Pinchbeck, I think it could have been a rather different story right now. Absolutely. I mean, where's Pinchbeck? Is he, uh, I'm assuming, you know, if he's talking in the YouTube chat, he's not racing. So, you know, he was definitely the, uh, the person who was worse off in that incident into Turn 1. And uh, Yannick, Muller, Yannick Muller is already back up to where he started in the race. So, you know, he's nine seconds behind Dean Riley. That time is coming down very, very slowly because as his pack is spread out now, they're all putting down those lap times that they did in qualifying or, you know, just a little bit off because they're running with full race fuel. But they, 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 they've got the optimum grip now. So, you know, Yannick Muller's going to have to put something extraordinary out the bag to even reach fourth, maybe even a podium. Well, the funny thing is, is that with uh, Yannick Muller, it's um, when I first came across him running an Audi R8 GT4 when he first made his debut at Laguna Seca. I think it might have been in the first season of uh, season four. We, we've just completed season five of GT4. Can you believe that? Oh, my goodness me. And I commentated on the first four. Um, <laughs> but Yannick Muller, you know, we know how fast he can be. He's even taken victories here at Simsport Racing. So he is no slouch. And you now Regan Mitchell, one of the other young youngsters in this uh, community, uh, nearly 800 members strong, including the two of us uh, here on on the uh, the commentary side of things. You know, and one of the things now that I'm going to bring in 
the sunsets coming in certain parts of the track the drivers are going to have the sunlight in their eyes and especially when there are no sun visors on a gt3 car here aaron that's where things get tricky absolutely um i i it's probably one of my pet hates <laughs> in ACC is that that glorious sunshine that just, you know, burns the corneas in your eyes. It's, it's, it's an awful feeling, especially I drive bonnet cam, you see, so I get, I, I, I'm just bare to the sun, really. But it does, it does impair you. It can distract you from uh, your braking markers in certain corners, especially the first corner when we did the GT4s. The sun just lit up off the tarmac and you could barely see the brake marker going into Redgate. And... Um, yeah, losing valuable time. So drivers are going to be praying for that sun to just disappear as soon as possible. I think what Rich Smith wants to disappear is Jack Young in his rear view mirror at the moment because they are still battling away. We're close to the halfway points of the race and uh, Ross McGregor still leading. And uh, McGregor has pitted. Smith has pitted. Young has pitted. Riley, Muller, Mitchell... Dixon, Santoro, Simon Crane, the only person in the top 23. Bravo, Denise Pope. She's running that McLaren until it's possibly running on fumes. And she's in P10, 14.3 seconds adrift of Simon Crane. Absolutely dynamite performance from the ladies so far. Yeah, she's got some great content from this race. If you if you don't already, definitely follow Denise, uh, Denise Pope on social media. And, um, and I definitely know she uh, streams as well. She's a resident ACC st uh, streamer, so go check her channel out as well. I know she'll be she'll be driving that <laughs> driving that car in the smell of an oily rag at the moment. She, I don't know how much she's got left in that car, <laughs> but uh, she's definitely going to be uh, you know I think hum hopping hopping to the pits very shortly because you know her tires can't be doing her that good. Surely she's still going to make two tire changes, and uh, she'd be better off just uh, setting on putting on a new set of slicks. Yeah, you're probably right there, and that might give her the impetus to uh, try and go for it because she is effectively the third highest placed AM driver. That's three AM drivers in the top 10, and that's really, really good to see. I mean, Jack Young put it on pole position after qualifying, and the track now at optimum. We are now down to 13 degrees Celsius. But then after the sunset comes the deep of the night, Aaron. And that's where things get even trickier, especially around a circuit like Donington Park. Yeah, well, we talked about, you know, the sun, you know, impairing your vision and certain brake markers. It, it, it gets it gets a whole lot worse. It's a whole different world when that moon pops up. It's uh, it's definitely difficult. You know, you've got to manage the grip in the tyres for starters. But just visually, you're so restricted as to what you can see. And um, if you don't have, if you have braking markers that are out way yonder, you know, maybe trees or, you know, certain signs and you can't see them, it can be a bit disastrous. You start second-guessing yourself, losing valuable seconds each lap, and um, we're definitely going to see that as the uh, as the night comes in. Yeah, Chris Pinchbeck has said, don't think I've ever been so gutted to be out of a race. Oh, Pinchy. That's a real shame, buddy. Well, we'll see you back on the track very soon, no doubt. Yannick Muller now still trying to chase down those four in front. Dean Riley will be the first target on his list as the Ferrari now makes its way through the Craner curves. Then there is uh, Regan Mitchell, Adam Isalovic up to P15. But there are two drivers that I have noticed here, Aaron, that have now served their second and final pit stop. One of them is Stephen Haley in the number 24, rounding out the top 22. Also, um, Gunn Brandel in the 737 and Jamie Peters Ennis in the Bentley, has also made his final pit stop. Denise Pope, after nearly an hour behind the wheel, has just parked it. She's done 40 laps nigh on on a full <laughs> tank of fuel, I bet, in that McLaren. Bravo, my dear. I mean, she'd be breaking like the Flintstones did, didn't it? Feet through the floor, just, just giving it the good old against the tarmac because there must be absolutely nothing left in terms of grip for that McLaren. Um, great job for her. Absolute props for her. We sit on board with Rich Smith, who's, you know, still at one and a half seconds behind McGregor. McGregor's now got his tyres warmed up. Jack Young going nowhere. Less than half a second off the rear of Rich Smith. So any mistake that these three drivers make, the the, the other two are going to capitalise for, for certainty. 
Right, top three covered by just under 1.8 seconds. Battle for the lead quite clearly on. And Ross McGregor must, you know, I mean, one of the things that we've got to realise here, I know I've done all these calculations. I'm sure that in the back of their minds, Ross McGregor and Simon Crane must be thinking, how close is this championship going to be at the end of the race? Well, when it's seven points, that's not um, something that I think Simon Crane wants to be thinking about right this moment in time. Well, well unless he's got the stream on Alex, I don't think he knows he's, it's seven points. It's just a big question mark to him. He might, you know, if, if, if he's a person that second guesses himself, is, you know, is not very confident, then he's going to be maybe thinking, I've not got enough. I've not done enough. You know, it's it's out of my hands. I'm, and it, you can tell that by the way he's driving. He's absolutely pushing that Bentley. He's now 20 seconds ahead of Passpont. He was 16 seconds ahead, maybe three laps ago. He is really pushing at that Bentley, and that just tells me he doesn't know that he's got it in the bag, and that just opens himself up for mistakes. If he's pushing like crazy, that can lead to unforced errors. I've seen it before in other sim racing leagues and championships, where someone pushes like crazy makes that one mistake that can cost them a championship and at this late stage obviously charlie cross and it would have been great to see him battling away for this title but obviously he's running in the british gt uh, cha uh esports championship that is currently running at oldson park this evening um so you can see how much ross mcgregor is hell bent on keeping that race lead. Yannick Muller's done a great job so far. He's currently in P5, but he's got Regan Mitchell breathing down his rear tailpipes right now. And this, I think, could be rather interesting because if Regan Mitchell goes up another position, that is going to give him a few more points, but it will keep him possibly third in the championship but he needs to do a lot more to get anywhere near both Simon Crane and Ross McGregor in the next 57 minutes. I mean, it's, it's incredibly frustrating if you're Regan Mitchell right now. You know, you're pushing as hard as you can. You're, 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 you're essentially, you know, tag teaming with one of the fastest drivers in SimSport, Yannick Muller. And it's still just not enough because the person you need to beat is winning this race. Now, anything can happen in this race, but he's winning this race. So that just adds to the frustrations of, you know, trying your hardest, but to no avail. So the drivers making their way through Redgate. That's Yannick Muller, Regan Mitchell, posing as best he can. And the number 69 McLaren is about six and a half tenths of a second behind the Apex Predator Ferrari. Um, Kieran Vidago was uh, Yannick Muller's teammate. Uh, Kieran, unfortunately, not had the best run of luck in season five and decided earlier on in the season uh, to withdraw. So Yannick Muller has been doing his level best for Apex Predator Racing as uh, we've got the uh, McLaren of Jackson that has now decided to take his final pit stop with just over 56, second, uh, 56 minutes on the clock remaining. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be rather interesting there. So Jackson's in the pits. You can see it in the picture-in-picture, picture, that bright yellow McLaren livery right there. That's something that will glow in the dark, and that could be rather helpful for the drivers in front uh, when the sun uh, when the, when the sunlight goes and the nighttime arrives. Absolutely. And I have to say, I... I... I've got this. I've got this question in the back of my mind. I, well, it's more the more of a thought, really. It's you know, are we going to start seeing drivers take a bit of a, a an earlier pit stop rather than the forty forty that we talked about? Maybe going a bit earlier because it didn't anticipate. Again, we just dropped another degree ambient and track. We're now down to twelve degrees. If these tires are not heating up enough, they may go in just to try and overinflate their tires a little bit. You've got to take into account you're going to be hitting curbs, so you want to add a few, you know, point p point two psi to each tire. But you you really want to you want to get them to the right inflation. You want to get them to the right psi. Otherwise, you're going to start losing time. So I'm I'm kind of thinking that we may see one of the leaders. Maybe Rich Smith, uh, maybe McGregor go into the pits a little bit earlier than the rest. Very, very true. And sometimes 
taking a gamble on strategy is what racing's all about. You and I both know that, Aaron. And these drivers are very, very well versed with the Assetto Corsa Competizione platform. And they'll know it like the back of their hands. Some are still learning. Some are still, like Denise Pope, she's consistently uh, getting quicker and quicker and getting a lot more of that confidence going through because she competes not only uh, on GT3s, she also does GT4. She's competed on some of the Sim Grid events as well. Um, so, you know, she's gained a lot of experience. But one of the other things about being a... Uh, a sim racer is that you learn by your experiences you learn about the high points and you also learn a lot more through the low points yeah and i think with atc there's just multiple variables that you have to consider not just on the track it's you know it's it's i think it's become a, a normalcy where we see drivers enter practice sessions and just practice hot laps they don't practice racing they don't practice full fuel you know there's a lot of there's a lot of things to consider and one of the things that a lot of people don't practice is pit entry and pit exit now before the first uh pit came about ross mcgregor was about two and a half seconds behind jack young so for me you know that that two and a half seconds could literally be rich smith and jack young missing their pit box and then being dragged back and then lift up because you lose so much time from that or maybe just not getting their ignition off early it's it, it, you could lose buckets of time by doing that so it, it, one simple mistake in the pits because you haven't practiced the pits could cost you the lead and also going off track like adam isarlovich did just going through the fog of ts's can cause you a an obscene amount of time as yes but peels now closes in on him on uh, with the Honda NSX. Stephen Haley closing on Martin Dagala. Haley has now done his two mandatory pit stops and is looking to charge past the 458 Ferrari, who is one of the AM drivers in this championship. And now the nighttime starting to factor in. And the track temperature has now dropped a further two degrees in the last 15 or so minutes, down to 12 degrees air, 12 degrees track temperature. This is where things get spicy. Uh, it's flask of coffee and thermal blankets about now. <laughs> it's going to get cold for the <laughs> for the people in the stands, that's for sure. Yeah, the virtual uh, the virtual uh, people in the in the grandstands and. Obviously, sitting in their virtual deck chairs just off the wheat cross straight will be freezing their tuckers off right about now <laughs> as soon as it hits sub uh, 10 degrees Celsius here at Donington Park. Uh, but still, plenty of racing still to go. And the biggest question, the $64,000 question I have right now, out of the top 10, who's going to blink first? Ooh, that's a that's a tough question. I mean... We've seen a lot of changes from the start of this race. Oh, bit of a bit of traffic there for Ross McGregor. Loses an absolute bucket load of time. Who was that? Someone in the McLaren was that one of the wild things, McLaren's, and that has allowed Rich Smith right on the back bumper, really. A couple of car lengths he's getting there. Also, Jack Young capitalizes. And these the Alina Stern back in contention for the lead this race. And it could all change like that in in the in the blink of an eye. Yeah, very much the case. And so Ross McGregor has to soldier on and try and keep Smith and Young at bay. Riley is nearly 10 seconds off of third position in fourth. Yannick Muller rounds out the top five. Then it's Regan Mitchell, Roberto Santoro, Miles Dixon, Simon Crane, Stain Passbon in the sole Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo, the triple four, rounding out the top 10. Ivaro Smikas. Uh, rounding out the top 11 ahead of Carola Sipovicius, Dave Hedges, Adam Isolovich, Jesper Peels, Mark Neuslings comes in for his final pit stop with just under 51 minutes on the clock to go. Denise Pope will then be promoted into P16 and Stephen Haley has just got past the number 458 of Martin Dergala. So Haley up into 19th, Mike Markerstein in 21st, Richard Pixley 22nd, Lucas Centales and we've got Jackson de Tolonera. Peter Zenis, Kelsey, Brandel, Dovidaitis, and Evan Davas rounding out the top 30 as Marcus Stein now pits the Honda for the final time in this race. Yeah, great job from Stephen Haley. You know, he everybody everybody ahead of him now is just a it's just an overtake. It's just it's just a statistic to him. He needs to push as much as he can. I think he's gonna end up with a really good result. Really, really good result. He doesn't have to worry about pits anymore. I think his tires are on form. He's on form and he'll be looking to shoot up. I think Maybe, maybe top 10. 
you could be right there, Aaron. Uh, I think anything's possible. We've we've seen plenty of things go wrong for people tonight. Who knows whatever, um, you know, who might be bringing something out of the magician's hat tonight. We've got absolutely no idea because both myself, as there goes Regan Mitchell in for his final pit stop. Now, if Denise Pope can run a McLaren 720S for just under an hour on a full tank of fuel and then come into the pits, I'm sure that Regan Mitchell will be more than capable to run that car for 48 and a half minutes until the chequered flag. Absolutely. I don't think it's the best pit strategy. I think it's certainly worthy of note and, you know, a big applause to Denise Pope for doing that. But I think I think Denise has actually harmed herself by doing it. I think, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, tip, there's a peak to the level of grip that your tyres can uh, that your tyres can have, and I think she definitely surpassed that. But <laughs> great, you no know, commendations to her for doing it. But I think uh, Regan Mitchell's did the right thing by pitting there. Obviously, he was trying to get past Yannick Muller. Yannick Muller's having none of it. So I think the best thing to do is use your pit now, get that free space, and uh, do the leapfrog in the pits. Very true. We're now uh, a couple of laps shy of hitting half a century. Fifty laps completed of the 2.5 mile circuit so effectively we'll have covered around about 125 miles um but there is zentalis up ahead uh who was quickly uh, given a flash of the headlights by ross mcgregor as if to say right son you're in the way just please move let us get through i've got work to do and I, think that he needs I think it was more like let me through don't let rich smith through <laughs> Well, yeah, that could probably be the read between the lines situation there, Aaron. Uh, Yannick <laughs> Muller has now pitted with 48 minutes still to go on the clock. So whether Yannick Muller can make some headway after putting a new set of tyres uh, on the car and also putting in some additional fuel to help him uh, get to the end of the race. But one of the other things here, Aaron, we've been talking about strategy quite a lot in the, this race. Yeah. But if you are taking a longer stint, as long as you add in a little bit of a um, bit of leeway in terms of the fuel, yeah. sometimes if your fuel consumption tends to be a little bit higher, especially when you're battling through back marker traffic or battling for position on the circuit itself, having that leeway can make all the difference because we've seen it where people in racing leagues have got it wrong on the fuel calculations. Absolutely, and uh, just seeing Yannick Muller as a, an example, obviously, in his car, we were talking about earlier about the map settings. He can run like a lower map setting to gain even more fuel economy, if that is the case for him. But it's always a, it's always really a guessing game. You're always doing like that kind of quick, rapid mental arithmetic as you're going through the pit stops. Um, and like you say, it doesn't always work out if your mental arithmetic is bad, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you don't do it. So t what people tend to do is uh, overestimate. It's, 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 it's better to be like that, maybe finish many, maybe finish a race with 10 litres to go. It's always better to be safe than sorry. So I would expect these drivers not try to lean burn, not try to get the optimal amount of fuel that they need to finish this race, but just overestimate. It's the safest thing to do. Yeah, but it might cost you a tenth, maybe two tenths per lap if you slightly over uh, overmeasure it. I've seen it before where people have uh, gone into the pits and they've accidentally overfueled by pressing the incorrect button on the steering wheel and that has caused people to end up longer in the pit lane and that is another thing where you know you're going to start to get tired oh for sure like this is something coming from i would say simcade racing games myself um on controllers uh to acc on uh, you know on a sim rig steering wheel and pedals the amount of concentration you need to perform at such a high level is it's, it's so much. It, it just it requires so much dedication and practice and concentration. And maintaining that concentration is the hardest part. Because if you dip off, if you if, if for a second, if you if you go into like you know robotic mode where you're just it's just a you know each turn is a sequence and you you, you start to lose precious tenths. You know you're being careless about your driving. If you want to run at optimum level, you really have to be on the edge, and that requires you to be consciously on that edge. So Simon Crane has pitted. He was up as high as P17. Riley in the pits. Adam Misalovich, Jesper Peels, all pitting. So with 45 minutes on the clock, Simon Crane has just ex rejoined in 13th position. He's just come out of Redgate and going down through Hollywood. So it's going to take a little bit longer 
for these tyres to go up to temperature as Crane now negotiates his way through Old Hairpin after going through the very, very fast section at the Craner Curves, up through Starkey's and through into Schwantz Curve, goes the number 53 of Pulse Simsport Racing. And it's been a rather interesting display. So at the moment, Ross McGregor, I think he's going to pit with about 30 minutes or so to go. Maybe 25 to 30 minutes will be the opportune time for Ross McGregor to pit. But then he's also got to just keep his eyes on when Rich Smith and Jack Young also pit. Well, Jack Young seems to have had a bit of a bit of a poor last couple of laps. He's lost a bunch of time, and it could be purely through you know hitting traffic at the worst time. Rich Smith, not too bad though. Still just a couple of car lengths. McGregor is starting to pull that lead away up to one and a half seconds now on Rich Smith, but that's that's literally nothing. That's you know failing to put your ignition on at the right time is one and a half seconds. So. It's all to play for, and I think it could be won or lost in the pits. Yeah, there is Ross McGregor still leading. We're on lap number 52 of this race with 43 minutes and 25 seconds still to go. Running order from 1st to 23rd. McGregor, Smith, Young, Santoro, Dean Riley, the first, uh, the highest place driver that's done both mandatory pit stops. Then it's Stane Passpont, Carolis Sipovicius, Yannick Muller, Regan Mitchell, Ivarus Mikus. Miles Dixon, Simon Crane, Dave Hedges now pits from P13 for his final pit stop of the season and also of the evening thereof. And that should probably promote Denise Pope into P13. She's, she's still got a final pit stop to make. Hedges has done his final pit stop. So uh, Degala has yet to do his final pit stop. Mark Neutling's in 17th. Jesper Peel's in 18th. Adam Isolovic. Lucas Centales, Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald, Richard Pixley, and Sebastian de Tolonera round out the top 23. Good running by Jamie Peters-Ennis in the Bentley. He's currently 2.2 seconds off of, off of de Tolonera. As now the night time has set in, the headlights are going to be the main guide along this. As oh, Markerstein nearly goes into the back bumper of Denise Pope. That was not a battle for position. Marcus Stein nearly caused himself a problem and also Denise Pope, who now has Stephen Haley for close company. And the biggest thing here oh. is, oh, Stephen Haley gets a touch from Marcus Stein. Oh, they don't say that one. Well, one of the thing is, one of the things is, is that one good shove does not deserve another as Miles Dixon now has a drive through penalty. And that will be, I think, for track limits. And it seems like Jack Young was held up in back marker traffic, according to Martin Owen on YouTube. But Denise Pope still in 13th position. As Ooh. oh, sideways from Stephen Haley going through Redgate. The back end of the Ferrari steps out. Oh, is that Denise Pope? Was that Denise Pope I've just seen go off the track? I think so. She's, she's gone for an absolute picnic there on the infield. She manages to recover that beautifully. Great composure there from Denise. She's lost the position, but she could have she could have lost so much more there. As Luke Hamlin Fitzgerald also did uh, dra uh, drive through for track limits as well. Are we going to see like I think we're going to see a huge amount of drive throughs coming in as the track gets really dark and they can't see their apexes. Well, Denise Pope, a very very lucky driver, right there and then. Number seventy nine from Wild Things Racing, still in fourteenth position. I think probably the best thing to do. Right, okay, let's have a look now. Steve, now she's going through into the Craner curves. Oh, oh, just goes towards the right hand side and just literally it goes straight on. Great now recovery. That, <laughs> that was that, great. That was a great recovery. Um, she, she's done the Valtteri Bottas going through the Craner curves and into the old hairpin, but Denise Pope, hang on, ha held on to that one and manages to get things recovered back through to Starkey's Bridge. I think, to be completely honest, if I was Denise Pope right now, maybe to, in the next 10 minutes, uh, get herself into the pit lane, get a new set of boots on there, just fill up uh, for as much as she needs until the end of the race, and maybe get a top 15 finish after that massive scare. Yeah, and it'll give her 30 seconds, bare minimum, just to kind of recompose herself. Great there. She just kept that McLaren straight straight and true across the grass. You don't want to be 
You want to be minimal inputs when you're going across the grass. You you, you know you want to minimize the chance of sliding the car out, especially the McLaren. And uh, that was a great job there. Only lost one position from that. How on earth did she come out? <laughs> no idea. But great job there, Denise. I think that's going to be on our social media profiles, especially Twitter as well, very, very shortly. <laughs> so uh, good on her. You know, she kept the throttle fully pinned. Uh, she didn't do a Valtteri Bottas. I'm going to call it that the grass was poke mode right there and then. Um, sorry about the pun there, Denise. But, you know, for her to hang on to it, uh, I have to give kudos where it is due. Um, she's done a brilliant race so far. Hats off to the lady. Yeah, fantastic drive from her so far in this race. I hope she can keep it up. Um, and she could be she could be driver, driver of the day for me, really, um, if she keeps it up. It'll probably be her best result yet. Get, get into the pits, Denise. Just get into the pits, recompose. See where you come out and just start charging hard. 30, 38 minutes left, buckets of time. Yeah, I think probably give it another eight or so minutes, and I think she probably will decide to go into the pits rather than have to worry about a splash and dash. But Ross McGregor on lap number 55, yet to come in for his final mandatory pit stop. Rich Smith, Jack Young, Dean Riley have all pitted. Stain Passmont and the Lamborghini up to fifth position. Carolis of Vicious in the leading Nissan, sixth place. Yannick Muller, who we're with right now, is right on the back bumper of Sipa Vicious and Passmont just up ahead. Sipa Vicious now dives into the pit lane to serve his final pit stop of the season and also of the race evening. And then you've got Regan Mitchell just behind. There is one of the cars coming out. I would imagine that's going to be Miles Dixon, but Simon Crane is in exactly the position he needs to be to win the championship. And McGregor now pits from the lead on lap number 55. This is the pit we want to watch. You know, it looked like Rich Smith got an absolute golden pit. He's having a bit of our time there. Is that through coppice? He's had a bit of a nightmare there, going really, really wide. He needs to use this lap now as much as he can to gain that time. He looked like he had a really good pit. Jack Young lost a couple of seconds in the pit there. He's down to five seconds in the distance. McGregor still in the pits. No movement from McGregor. And it's all down to Rich Smith. Last couple of hairpins. Still no movement from McGregor. This is going to be super close. Yep, coming through the Melbourne hairpin is Rich Smith. Ross McGregor now starting to make his way out of pit lane. So... Ross McGregor will come out in front because Rich Smith now coming through Goddard's. But the biggest thing with 11 degrees Celsius, those tyres are going to be ultra cold for Ross McGregor. But he comes out of the pits in front of the number two, 23 Mercedes. The battle for the race lead and also the final victory of the season is well and truly on. Oh, Rich Smith gone wide at Redgate. I don't think he's got enough. Those tyres are not ready. They're just not at optimum grip level for Rick Smith right now, and this is not what he needs. He's lost an absolute bunch of time. Six, six point eight seconds gap now from one point five. He's lost about he's lost about five seconds of time just through the pits and traffic. Rick Smith must be beating himself to death. It must be traffic and the bad pit stop for him. I thought it was a really good one, but I don't know what it is. But Ross McGregor has absolutely nailed both his pit stops so far, and it's absolute silver lining for him. Yeah, this means that Jack Young, who's now 4.9 seconds behind, Rich Smith having another drama. Oh, this could give a more... that Now, that's a big moment there for Rich Smith. And I've just seen that was the 737 of Blandle just behind. He went off at the same point of the circuit that was coming through Coppice. This now means that, look, the gap between Young and Smith has halved through that mistake from Rich... Two mistakes on the trot. Um, and we just had a message uh, on the YouTube chat that Pope deserves the good race after the race we had yesterday. Uh, she hit an invisible wall in the middle of the track, killing the engine. Well, Denise Pope uh, has definitely got the driver of the day vote from both myself and Aaron Martin Pilkington for drive of the day, but also drive of the season. I don't care who you are. Denise Pope has done an absolutely blinding job as all. Regan Mitchell gets a tap from behind, courtesy of Yannick Miller. There's Stain Passbont. Roberto Santoro might not be too far away from this battle. And this is for P5. And with the way things are going, I think that Ross McGregor is going to secure second in the championship. Regan Mitchell's moments in this race are starting to come thick and fast. Um, and also one of the biggest things here now is Stain Passmont has pitted from P7. 35 minutes on the clock to go. And we are not done yet. No, and you can see that. Rich Smith is absolutely ab 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 having an absolute nightmare in the number 22 Mercedes. Looks like Jack Young is really reeling him in in that, in that McLaren. And I kind of feel like the podium battle is still on between second and third. Ross McGregor doing a fantastic job. 
Mitchell getting past Muller as well. We wanted to catch that battle, but everything was going on. They, they seem to have leapfrogged in the pits, of, uh, in the pits, I think, as well. So Mitchell, as much as he's in fifth place, it's just still not enough to catch, uh, catch McGregor. That's the way they are. They, the way things still stand, Simon Crane, oh, he's going to get eighth position. This is now going to further extend the gap to 645 points versus 634. So Ross McGregor now needs to have a bit of a miracle because Simon Crane will be, is now in eighth position. Stain Passmont has pitted for the final time. Denise Pope, the only driver out of the top 23, yet to serve a final pit stop. And she is currently P15, a couple of laps down off of the leaders. But here is the battle on the main picture on your screens as we got Simon Crane on the picture in picture. This is Regan Mitchell versus Dean Riley. And this is the battle for fifth position. How long can Regan Mitchell hold on uh, with from Yannick Muller's advances? And that Ferrari looks rather menacing going down Hollywood and into the Craner curves. That Ferrari is absolutely stuck to the tarmac and Regan Mitchell knows it. Yeah, you could just see Yannick pushing so hard, you know. He's he's almost power sliding through the corners the way you drive that Ferrari. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a mini power slide to get the optimum you know, the optimum handling and the grip out of the corners. And at night time as well, where there's barely any temperature, he's doing a fantastic job. I just don't think it's enough. That McLaren just seems to be the greatest car at Donington so far. Um, watching, you know, the likes of uh, James Bolden drive it. You know, Mitchell's doing a fantastic job here. It's not going to be enough, but a top five finish, if he keeps it up like this, will be well-deserved after battling with Yannick Muller. And that will put him third in the championship standings. And it looks like a mere formality because with the way things stand, Simon Crane and Miles Dixon have uh, pretty much sewn up the team's title this evening. Well, they'd already secured it with the round remaining. So a fantastic job by Pulse Simsport to come in for a full campaign. And their cars, both Bentleys, the 53 and the 94 of Crane and Dixon, with just over 32 minutes remaining. And the picture-in-picture picture is showing the onboard from Yannick Muller's perspective in the 143 Apex Predator Racing Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo 3.9 litre, twin turbocharged, V8 mid-engined rear-wheel drive, uh, Cavallino Rampante, as they say in Italy. The prancing horse is definitely closing on Woking's finest, piloted by Yannick Muller. They've got one of the Wild Things cars just up ahead. That is Denise Pope. So she will need to briefly get out of the way. And Regan Mitchell now just closing in. That's going through McLean. Uh, McLean's and into coppice as Denise Pope decides to go to the left-hand side, does the right thing there because she saw how close they were catching. I think Denise Pope could be due a pit stop imminently. Yeah, I think she's the last person on this track here, Donington at night time, to really go into the pits. So she's held out for as long as she possibly could. I think you're right with the eight-minute estimation within maybe this lap or the next lap. We're going to see Denise Pope get into the pits here. This battle is still, still on. Just an update from the front, though. Rich Smith is now eight and a half seconds behind Ross McGregor. But Jack Young, the distance between Jack Young and Rich Smith is coming down. Less than a second between second and third with traffic up ahead. That sounds ominous when you said the words right there and then. There's traffic up ahead. <laughs> oh, mama. This is going to be interesting because now the gap between Rich Smith and Jack Young now just 1.158 seconds as they now make their way through the right-hander at McLean's before the right-hander at Coppice. And this is where things get rather, rather interesting. And to be honest with you, for a two-hour race, we've had plenty to talk about so far, haven't we, <laughs> Mr. Martin Pilkington? Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's been action-packed throughout and you know there's been great battles up and down the field i feel sorry for chris pinchbeck you know you know be having to vacate and go to the pit lane so early feel bad for him also feel bad for zentalis who started really well down in p24 great job from denise pope great job from everyone in the top five as well great commendable job from stephen haley and his uh, teammate day pages who were somewhere around the the, the the 20 p20 mark they're up and fighting for 10th place essentially, to get into that top 10. So 
you know, it, it's, it, it's great for some people, it's disaster for others, but it's been action-packed nonetheless. We're into the final quarter of this race. 29 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. McGregor leads after 60 laps in the books. Rich Smith now having Jack Young for close company. Jack Young was on the cusp of maybe going for the victory overall in this race, but he's going to have to settle for P3, or if he can get close enough, he's just lost three tenths to Rich Smith in the last moment or so. The gap was down to around about eight tenths between Smith and the 223 Simsport Solutions Mercedes with Jack Young in the 900 McLaren 720S GT3 still battling away. Dean Riley, Regan Mitchell now battling away with uh, Yannick Muller as they've gone, gone through the old hairpin, up through Starkey's, through Schramm's curve. Go the pair. And they are about three and a half tenths of a second apart. Rich Smith now starting to close on Ross McGregor. Still with 28 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. I think anything's possible. And Ross McGregor might have... Well, the thing is, Ross McGregor has just lost two seconds on the previous lap. And Rich Smith has really now got an, uh, an opportunity to move forward. So has Jack Young. I don't think the victory is quite decided yet, as now Denise Pope pits for the final time. This drops her down to around about 18th to 20th position. And there she is in the pit lane. Rich Smith now has to start fighting his way through back marker traffic. It is now or never if he wants to pick up the victory ahead of Ross McGregor. Lordy, that's busy on that track. I mean, we've got people flashing everybody. There's back markers over back markers over back markers. And it's crazy because you, you can't see anything. All you can see is lights. And you, you, you're you going off the Delta. You're going off the ladder on your screen, the user interface. And, and that's all you've got. If you see someone flashing, it's just best to get out of the way. But it's so difficult to get out of the way in the first sector there. Rich Smith really given a lifeline. He's lost maybe half a second on McGregor. I can only surmise that the reason that McGregor lost two seconds was because of that absolutely traffic jam that we just saw that Rich Smith has had to get through as well. Um, so back in McGregor's court, really, he's, he's extending the way at the front. You can see that time going back up. It's the traffic that is causing these time differences. Jack Young's just been compromised by a Ferrari just up ahead going through the fog as he S's. That's not what Jack Young needed. And Young has actually spun it. Young has spun it. And he's lost an absolute humongous amount of time. This could mean that Dean Riley might make it a 2-3 for SimSport Solutions. There is Riley. The gap was 8.8 .8 seconds. I think that is probably less than two seconds between that two because that is a massive amount of time that Jack Young has just lost. Yeah, great job for Riley, though, isn't it? When you can see the person in front of you spin out. You, you never wish bad luck on people. You could just you could just see that. This is the uh, replay on Jack Young. Let's see what happens. So going through, I think he's going through the... That's going, yeah, that's going through into Starkey's, now into Schwantz Curve, up the hill. And he's going to go through into the right-hander at McLean's. Gets onto the curbs. Just, uh, just keep watching for a second up towards Coppice. Through into the right-hander. Takes a wallop of curb. Goes tight on the inside. Now comes out of the corner. Just keep your eyes at the minute. Now, this is where we are at the moment. Going down into the Fogarty S's. There's a Ferrari just up ahead. The Ferrari gets onto the racing line. Oh, and that puts... That puts Young into a spin. The back end steps out to the right. He tangles with the Ferrari, and it's a full 360. Oh, and he nearly gets collected. That was possibly Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald that just literally had a code brown moment going past the spinning Jack Young that was just recovering. I oh, thought was so unlucky there. I mean, that Ferrari had pulled all the way over, and because and because it's, 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 it's a high speed, you kind of want to straight line it through the S's. There's nowhere for that Ferrari to go. The Ferrari would have to practically stop there. So it's kind of like they're on the collision course and there's nothing that can be done about it. But once that McLaren gets unsettled, you can see here, in these temperatures, it's just not got no grip. It's got no grip and he, he just, you know, he tried to correct it there and it snapped on him. So, but it's a great recovery there. But he could have been so nearly collected by Luke Hannon Fitzgerald there. He's really, really lucky that he's still in third place. I think Chris Pinchbeck has just made a very, very loud, uh, valid point. He said that it's terrible that Rich Smith had to wait that long for a back market to move. Well, it's a case of two things. And I understand completely where Chris Pinchbeck is coming from because 
Not only is it down for the faster car to make the move safely, it's also down to the spatial awareness that is given by the driver that is being blue flagged. And we yeah. have seen it before where a driver that is being uh, that has had a blue flag may be embroiled in a battle with another driver over position. That being said, if it is back marker traffic and you're trying to get away from someone that's closing on your six rather quickly, uh, and also we're seeing now that uh, there is uh, Adam uh, Isalovich there, and I think he's got Stephen Haley closing in on him. Back to the battle for 16th position. Denise Pope is seven and a half tenths of a second behind Martin Dergala in 19th, and then a further four tenths up the road is Jamie Peters Ennis. Who's not to say that Denise Pope takes 18th place by the end? And that's exactly what Daniel Parker has just said. He says she should get 18th. Yeah, she, she's been an absolute flyer, uh, you know, as, she, as she's come out of her last pit stop. And, and now she's got two people. This is this is great. When, you've done a, when you're doing a two-hour race, you're coming into the final section, you come into the final 20 minutes, and you're battling for position. You could just see that, you know, she wants her. I think that's Mark Neutling's trying to get out of the way. He does so indeed. I think she kind of pushed her way through there but she's she's she's, she's got no time she needs to get through there she's got she's got de gala to catch in the ferrari the number four five is it the four five eight she, or four five three sorry that she's got to catch so uh she has got that no no time. that was jamie peter's ennis oh the was 177 it? yeah jamie peter's ennis was the one flashing the light so uh, denise pope now has to find 1.3 seconds and she could find that rather easily in the next couple of laps i think uh, depending on how close that and i've just seen martin dagala just up ahead but she's having to get out of the way of back marker traffic and that was riley going through in the number 22 and there is uh there's peter's alice he's still flashing the headlights at these pope oh my oh. goodness me jamie oh. peter's alice just decides to cut the chicane a little bit there now i have worked <laughs> with jamie before um 2016 August Bank Holiday Weekend, he was in the pit lane when we had the... That was the August Bank Holiday Weekend. You might remember that weekend because um, there was a tornado that ended up at... Um, uh, I think it was at Rockingham that weekend. Myself and Jake Sanson were at Snetterton. Jamie was in the pit lane um, for Fun Cup. He's just decided to pit um, with 22 minutes uh, still to go on the clock. And I remember that Jamie had to have his receiver changed a couple of times because he was doing all the pit lane work. Myself and Jake Sanson were sitting in the... Well, we, we were in the dry off Woodcut and Luffield commentating on the race around the national circuit. So it's been a long time since I've seen that name. If that's <laughs> the same person. Well, it's interesting that you mention it because he's, he, or he served his two mandatory pits that everybody else has had to serve in this race. Him and Mark Neutelins coming into the pits for a, well, a, a non-compulsory pit. I don't know. Maybe they've not had put enough fuel in the car. The tyres should be fine at this point. Mm -hmm. Really don't know. It could be tyre pressures. They're having to reinflate the tyres. But that is going to cost them an absolute bucket of time. Stephen Haley, Adam's gonna, Adam Isalovich, Jasper Peels, Degala, Pope, Hanlon, Di Tolonera, the all, all of them are going to benefit. And we just see Peter Zenis, you were talking about him, got to stop and go 30 that's the speed in the pit lane no doubt about it he's gonna be fuming you know what the funny thing is daniel parker keep your eyes on the timing tower denise pope is 3.2 seconds away from 17th position denise pope has done an absolutely brilliant job she had compromises in the first part of the race dropped out of the top 25 now up into 18th position and that gap has been halved I think De Gaulle has had a bit of a moment, so Denise Pope could really be chomping at the bit and going, right, I want to go for 17th. I've got Martin De Gaulle. I've got to make the move cleanly through. So with 20 and a half minutes still remaining, Ross McGregor leads on lap number 67. Rich Smith, 6.5 seconds behind. Jack Young now 8.6 behind. Rich Smith, Dean Riley, four and a half seconds uh, behind as we switch back to Carolis Sipovicius as Ross McGregor has just put him down by a lap. Um, and Simon Crane is in exactly the position he needs to be right now. He is currently in eighth place, which nets him 100 
and 32 points. I think Ross McGregor, had it not been for illness earlier on in this championship, I think he would have been right at the sharp end because it looks like, oh, someone else has just dived into the pits as well. I think some people have really misjudged their fuel for... And now, look, the battle picture in picture. We go to Denise Pope and Martin Dergala. They just come out of the Melbourne hairpin. And now it's all on your screen. Denise Pope, well, it's showing that she's up in 17th position. So whoever pitted just a second ago, that could change as it now updates. Three and a half, well, 0.36 sevenths. Uh, Daniel Parker saying he's getting his pom-poms out. You're going to be a cheerleader now, aren't you, Daniel Parker? Uh, that's one way of um, putting it. He decided to sign out this evening and watch from the sidelines. But we know who he's cheering on. Denise Pope has got that McLaren planted through the bottom part of the crane of curves. Martin Dergala can feel the heat. And as they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And Denise Pope here, last to pit as well. She's got no issues with grip at all at the moment. I think it looks like she's perfectly sorted her PSIs out in that McLaren. She's got buckets of grip. You could just see how she just launches herself onto the back of Degala. Degala having to take the well, the wide line out there. And it looks like look how much she can just pin it on the inside. Taking the inside line, the, that's the shortest way around the circuit as well as it go towards the S's. I'm not surprised if she can get up the inside going into the uh, into the final hairpin. She gets the right drive out of here, cuts across. That looks very, very clean there. Has Degala done the same? He does. He goes towards the middle. You can see Degala. He's taken that midline. He's he's it's it's all a, it's all a game of chess. It's it's mind games right now. You can see Degala moving towards the middle of the track, trying to defend there. But it looks like Denise Pope is going side by side. That's a, now we go on board. Degala sweeps in front of the number seventy-nine Wild Things McLaren seven twenty S GT three. Just under eighteen minutes to go. Good evening, Cameron Five. Uh, good to have you with us um and uh yeah oh well daniel parker I i'm glad to hear that you're back home safe and sound uh from hospital so uh get well soon buddy um but denise pope now really hustling we are on board in the picture in picture with the number 79 wild things mclaren down through hollywood through into the craners denise pope absolutely stuck to the tarmac like glue and martin dergala makes his way through the old hairpin tighter line taken by denise pope I think it's only not a case of if, it's going to be a case of when does Denise Pope go for the move that puts her into 17th position. I think it's got to be the S's, Alex. I think if she gets the right, she, if she leaves enough distance between her, herself and Degala, and she gets a blinding run through the S's, she can have the trap position going down into the last two hairpins. I think Goddard is where she'll finally make, you know, she'll make the move successful, but she's really got to have the courage to kind of just send it through the chicane don't know how many track warnings she got, she's got that might be impeding her here. She looks like she's taking it very delicately, very gently. She needs to just really send it. Looking towards the inside, but she's got not got the run. She's going to have to tuck him right behind the Ferrari. Degali doesn't have to go defensive here at all. There's a couple of car lengths there where he's got of relief. So he's not actually having to defend right now. Yeah, Denise Pope using the old uh, cutback offensive here, using the switchback, trying to take the wider line, rotate the car in, and make it stick through the apex. And she's she's got that down to a fine art after, what is it, the best part of nearly an hour and 45 minutes completed. Um, but I think Denise Pope just has to, I think what she needs to do is buy the time. She's got 16 minutes to do so. And what she needs to do is wait for Martin Dergala to have an unforced error. Yeah, that's one way to play it. I think that I think she's got enough skill, really, to compromise to Gala, not to have to wait for him. But I think that's the safest option, actually, right now. As as we say, you know, visions compromise night times upon us. We're talking single digit track to get track temperature. That's not going to help us at all, um, or it's not going to help the drivers certainly. And True. I think that maybe waiting for a mistake is probably the best thing for her. But I I don't think it's the only option she's got. No, because. Now, uh, Rich Smith has just had a massive hold up and Jack Young is right on his six. Oh, my goodness me. And Rich Smith. Oh, it's nearly three abreast. And that is Carvalho super vicious that had to get out of the way. Jack Young now using the over 700 Newton meters of torque from that twin turbo four liter V8 M840 designation in the back of that McLaren to good use. But he hasn't managed to get past. One hour, 45 minutes completed. Now, 15 minutes remain 
here in the season five GT3 finale here on Sim Sport Racing. And the action has only started intensifying to its crescendo right now as Jack Young has second position in his sights. Another mistake from Rich Smith going through the first part of the Craner curves. Rich Smith now has a back marker up ahead and that is going to really compromise him as in the picture in picture, Denise Pope really pushing and trying to put the pressure on Martin Zagala as they go through the Craners. Fantastic action here as well. We're talking Alvaris Mickers was the back marker to get out of the way, but he's going side by side with Super Vicious. Super Vicious kind of just backs out of that over going over Capiche. I think it's Capiche. That's right. Coppice. Coppice. No, no, Coppice. Hey, no, no. Capiche is an Italian term, so like saying, you understand? Coppice. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to you. Capiche. Okay, yeah, okay. Hey, Capiche. Hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> we're going to go all New York in this. Uh, no, we're not. Not tonight. Not tonight. Um, but uh, Mike Marcus Stein has just had a drive through penalty. But um, Rich Smith, is, I think he's had the frightness put on him because Ivaris Mikas really held him up there. Martin Degada and Denise Pope, picture in picture, have just navigated the Fogarty S. As Denise Pope looks a little bit, easy, uh, looks to be getting the better traction coming out of the Fogarty S's, but Martin Zagala is just able to place the car where he needs to as they now come out of the Melbourne hairpin, the short blast up to the left-hand hairpin at Goddard's, which brings them onto the weak cross straight. Denise Pope still not close enough, but I think if Martin Zagala keeps on pushing like he is, there will be a mistake happening, and I don't think it will be Denise Pope. She's come this far as, again, dust kicked up through the craners, now, was that Smith or Young? I'm not too sure. But look at the state of the left-hand side of that McLaren. Marbles, rubber, dust, dirt, the whole shebang on that what was a very nice uh, Braun-esque, well, Rocket, uh, Team RJN Rocket-style livery there on that McLaren 720 of the 900 of Jack Young, who's still hell-bent on trying to get second position from Rich Smith. But Smith now starting to pull away. Yeah, Rich Smith has done his absolute damnedest to, to try and extend. You know, at one point, he was badly with McGregor. He's now 11 and a half seconds off the lead. And he must be fuming because uh, most of it's down to traffic, just hitting it at the wrong moment on the track as well. And this has allowed Jack Young to reel him back in less than a second. You've got Stain Passbond up ahead as well, who's battling with Mac Di uh, sorry, Dixon, Miles Dixon. So there's a battle up ahead again. They've just gone through a battle with Super Vicious and Mikus. And now it's another battle for position. And these guys are going to be close together coming through Redgate. Yeah, 12 minutes to go. Miles Dixon. As all oh, Adam Isalovich has now got to drive through. The mistakes are coming thick and fast. Stain Passbon, not too far behind the number 94 from Pulse Simsport, as now they make their way through. And just behind them, there is one of the Simsport Solutions Mercedes, I think. I'm just trying to keep an eye out for the number. It could be the 223 of Smith, or it could be the 22 of Riley, as they now come through the old hairpin. So Dixon trying to hold on for ninth position. If he stays in the top 10, Pulse Simsport still will provisionally win. They've already sewn up the team's title by a considerable margin. No one else has gotten close to them this season with that amount of advantage coming into this race. Uh, I, I, I've, got to, I've got to say something, Alex. I think De Gaulle's crumbled. I've just seen a ticker. De Gaulle's absolutely crumbled here. Pope has taken 17th there. I don't know how. We didn't see it on screen. But by default, she surely has got 16th as well. So she's going to move up two places. Yeah, because Adam Isalovich will have to serve a drive-through penalty within three laps. That's for track limits. And Miles Dixon having a bit of a moment. And and you know you know what the funny thing is? Behind Miles Dixon, it's the battle for second. Smith and Young bang each other's doors down. And what's happening now? Young's swarming all over the back bumper. Dixon gets out of the way, knows that that battle behind is something he does not need to be involved with because the battle he's got to worry about is the one behind him as there is an Aston Martin pulling to the right-hand side. So this is where things get rather, rather interesting. Ross McGregor has got over a 12-second advantage after 73 laps completed of this 2.496 mile track here at Donington Park Grand Prix in Leicestershire. Jack Young now gets the hurry up sign. He'll have seen that there is just over 10 minutes to go. It is time to put it on the line and Jack Young could be on the runner up step on the rostrum this very evening. 
You can see there Rich Smith as well, trying to hold him up through the corners, just slowing a little bit down more on the apex as well, which is bunching them back up into the bat markers that just let them through. That's not what you want if you're Jack Young. You're just going to be in a sandwich. You're going to be the meat in a sandwich. He has to make this pass, and he has to make it as soon as possible. Yeah, and now they're going through the fog at TSs. If he gets a good run coming out of here, he does, oh! and Rich Smith does, but Smith has a moment. That means Jack Young's got second. With nine and a half minutes to go, it was only a matter of time. Rich Smith, the back end stepped out to the left, and Jack Young said, thank you very much. You've opened the ki the door for me, kind sir. Yeah, it was true. only a case of, it was ca it was not a case of if, it was a case of when. Um, Adam Isalovic has taken his drive through penalty, but Denise Pope is still quite a distance behind. She's about 21 seconds adrift. So Denise Pope... Um, Right, okay, let's have a replay. Now, this is coming through into the Fogarty S's. Young's got a really good run on Smith. Through into the chicane. Into the left. Into the right. Dust kicked oh. up by Smith. It turns the tail end to the left-hand side, and it pitches into the right-hand side of the circuit, and Jack Young literally lit up the rear tyres and floored the throttle. I, I mean... The gates of heaven would open there for Jack Young. I'm so sorry for Rich Smith. Just took too much of the uh, exit of the S's. Car bobbled over the uh, yellow baguette. And uh, great save, by the way. Great, great save by there from Rich Smith. But he loses a position with less than 10 minutes to go. I, I don't know whether he can get that back. There's a big distance now. Jack Young just looks f he's flying. Yeah, Ross McGregor, picture in picture there in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. He's now going to complete the 75th lap of this race, which will put us at just over 187 miles completed with eight minutes on the clock still to go. Well, who would have thought we've had dramatic finales in the driver swap season three, but I think season five has well and truly taken the biscuit this evening. We've still got seven and three quarter minutes to go. And Aaron, the question I need to ask you, can you believe that nearly oh, just over one hour and 50 minutes of this race have just flown by? It, it's absolutely flown by. Time flies when you're having fun, right? I think that's I think that's the golden saying, and it's definitely happened here. There's still battles all over the place. The top 10 is not sold right now. You've got Dixon, Passport, Mixers, and Sipper Vicious all battling for places within the top 10. I mean, Super Vicious is a little bit off in the Nissan, but those three are really close together. And we just saw them as well with that battle for the podium positions. That's still really, really close. It's any, anything's to play for. Yeah, Passpont's just about 1.1 seconds behind Miles Dixon. Ivaris Mikus. Now, was there a little bit of a moment there for staying Passpont? I think that was the case going through McLean's, but he managed to catch it, save it, and put the throttle down and light up the rear tyres and get going. Once again, Ivaris Mikus. And also, one of the other things is, this battle for second not over yet. Look, Rich Smith has been firing on all of that 6.2-litre V8 naturally aspirated Mercedes-AMG Leviathan from Afaltabach. And Jack Young knows that second place is still not 100% resolved yet. No, absolutely, absolutely not. Rich Smith... He's had, a, he's had a hell of a time today at Donington. These two hours have not been kind to him. I think a second place will be most deserved to both of them, but only one can take that crown. Ross McGregor way out in front by almost 12 seconds. I think that's done and dusted unless something absolutely tragic happens to him. But these two still fighting for position and plenty of traffic to get past. Yeah, five minutes and 55 seconds still to go on the clock. And as things stand... The team's championship already sewn up by Pulse Simsport, by my honest estimation. But the way things are, Simon Crane is in eighth position. That will net him 132 points. That will bring him to a grand total of 645. Ross McGregor will finish 11 points adrift in second position. A closely fought championship, despite Ross McGregor not competing in the whole of the season. But he found his speed and purchase right here at Donington Park Grand Prix. He's 11.8 seconds ahead of Jack Young, who still has Rich Smith breathing up his rear tailpipes. There they are, going through the Melbourne hairpin.
this is where it all counts. Now this is the time to not make mistakes. Watch your P's and Q's, dot your, dot your I's and cross your T's, and also do the old Hail Mary. Make sure that everything is crossed and covered before you get to the checkered flag in just over four and three quarter minutes. Yeah, and it just goes to, it just goes to, it makes you think as well. You know, we talked about the map settings in these cars, the Mercedes. Map two is fuel economy. A couple of tenths you lose a lap by not being in map one. If he's got that in his back pocket, if Rich Whiffer's got that, use it now. I don't think he would have. I think he's already there. But if he's not, get it done. Like, you know, don't worry about fuel economy right now. You've got five minutes left. You've just got to get every tenth you can squeeze out of that Mercedes to catch up uh, Jack Young. Yeah, you've got to push that car at well over 100%, maybe make that 110 to 115. You, you know, the drivers are now feeling tired. They are sweaty. They are Their, their hydration levels are, are slipping ever so slightly. And one of the other things is that when you sweat, you lose sodium. And that's the key point of hydrations, uh, hydration for any sim race, especially of this longevity. But Rich Smith still trying to do his level best to catch up to Jack Young. Stain Passport and Ivaros Mikas. That's the battle for P10. And I think Ivaros Mikas has got ahead. And just behind them is the number 22 of Dean Riley with three and a half minutes still to go. Passport and Mikas battling over the final position in the top 10. Yeah, cutback's not going to be possible there at Melbourne Hairpin. He's going to look towards the outside. I think Mikas is going to take the inside, squeeze him ever so slightly. They're, they're rubbing panels there. It's one line, really, through Goddard's. And Mikas is going to get this sold. He's flashing away. Mikas is flashing away. And this is not even lap traffic. He's playing mind games with, <laughs> with Miles, Miles Dixon there in the Bentley just ahead. He just wants to gain positions. I think for Passpont, a top 10 position for him to finish off this championship would do him so well. He would deserve it so much. Indeed, I completely agree. Ross McGregor on lap number 79. Uh that we're currently on at the minute is still leading he leads by just over 10.4 seconds from jack young there is the leader on your screens as he now makes his way down towards the fogarty s's rich smith in third dean riley in fourth regan mitchell in fifth yannick muller roberto santoro simon crane miles dixon ivaro smickers stain passport dave hedges stephen haley carola supervicious jesper peels adam isalovic Denise Pope in the last few minutes has closed up to within 16.4 seconds on the triple one from Racing Cube. So she's knocked out over five seconds off of that gap between herself and Adam Isalovic. She is pushing like crazy in the dying stages. Gerd Brandel, Luke Hanlon, Fitzgerald, Sebastian Tatolinella, they round out the top 20 as Ross McGregor is now, I think, on the penultimate lap of the race when we're running in the 128. So a moment there for Muller going through the Fogarty S's. He didn't need that whilst trying to hunt down Regan Mitchell for P5. No, he absolutely did. He didn't. He, two minutes left. You want to keep that Ferrari as settled as possible as we go down to eight degrees track temperature and ambient. But I have to say, if you've got any track limits left, now would be the time to use them. You've got to get those runs as you see. It's Dixon and Mikas going side by side. There's a massive crash. It looked like Mikas just turned oh. into the side of Dixon. That is huge. And a pass point is going to make up two places there. Who else is going to capitalize on that accident? Dave Hedges might do as well. Oh, my goodness me. Ividas Mikas just went for it. And it did not pay off. As we've got 60 seconds on the clock remaining, Ividas Mikas is now behind Miles Dixon. Ross McGregor this time around will go on to the... Now, let's have a look at the replay. Okay, now this is coming through Redgate into Hollywood. Wide from Dixon, Ividas Mikas goes through up the inside, through into the crane of curves. Oh, the slightest of touches. Mikas turns in, and that sends Dixon spinning... And uh, Mikas goes drifting on the left-hand side on the approach into the old hairpin. But Miles Dixon, that was a heart-wrenching moment right there. Last lap, we are now on. It's going to be 81 laps in duration. And that is going to put us at 202.18 202 mile, uh, 202 miles at the completion of this race. It has been 
a pretty dominant display, but the minute he got into the lead, Ross McGregor has not looked back. The clock now strikes zero as he goes through. Um, McLean's now into Coppice for the final time. Martin de Gaulle has just put in the chat that he's lost connection. That's a real shame for Martin because he was running into the bottom part of the top 20. As uh, someone goes doing a Valtteri Bottas uh, down uh, the straightaway. So uh, in the picture in picture, there is Simon Crane. He is literally corners away from taking the season five title. And behind him is the guy that's going to finish second behind him by just 11 points. Who would have called this one? This evening here on Sim Sport Racing, we have had drama, we have had trials, tribulations, but out of God Oz, for the 81st and final time, it is Ross McGregor from Zancho Sim Sport that wins the race. But, however, by my calculations, by a mere 11 points, when he comes round to finish his 81st lap, let's keep with him. Simon Crane from Pulse Sim Sport has done exactly what he needed to do tonight, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he, he kept his nose out for, for most of it, you know. Just sitting at that rear end of the top 10, not really getting into trouble, getting those clean pit stops, getting that clean air. He didn't want any trouble, no stress, really, apart from that huge incident we just saw with uh, Alvarez. Oh, no, no, so that was, that was Dixon, sorry. No, Crane was done absolutely perfect tonight. Just kept it clean. Absolutely clean from him. He did. He knew what he needed to do, and maybe he did know the points. Maybe he's got a crew chief in his ear telling him that he was seven points clean. So no pressure to him, and he's going to come with the line as a champion. Yeah, so just uh, flashing one of the uh, Hondas just up ahead. Just a few more corners remain. Through the Fogarty S's for the final time for Simon Crane. It has been an arduous two-hour race for the number 53 from Pulse Sim Sport. But now, through the Melbourne hairpin, he just has got odds to circumnavigate. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me make a procl proclamation. Your Season 5 Sim Sport Racing GT3 champion from Pulse Sim Sport. It is Simon Crane in the 53. And he starts celebrating by flashing the front fog lights on that Bentley Continental GT3. Oh, winning is such a great feeling, especially <laughs> if your name right now is Simon Crane. Fantastic for him and Paul Simstor as well. Him and his teammate Miles Dixon really were really close together during that race. And he's had some great results throughout this championship. Both of them, I remember it very clearly at Kyle Army as well. You know, incidents early on in that race came back to win the race. Um, so much deserved to Simon Crane and uh, Miles Dixon, his teammate. Fantastic job from the pair of them. We'll hopefully get some interviews in very, very shortly, but your provisional uh, results here, obviously stewards still have to look at everything that transpired during the race. Ross McGregor, after 81 laps, wins the race ahead of Jack Young by 6.962 seconds. Then it was Rich Smith with Dean Riley and Regan Mitchell rounding out the top five. Yannick Muller in six, Roberto Santoro, Simon Crane, your season five champion, running out the top eight ahead of Stain Passport, Miles Dixon, Ivaro Smickers, Dave Hedges, Stephen Haley, Jesper Peels, Karola Sipovicius, Adam Isolovich. Congratulations to Denise Pope in 17th at the line, having qualified 23rd. Gernot Brandl in 18th, Sebastian de Tolonera in 19th, and Luke Hanlon Fitzgerald rounding out the top 20. Wow, what a race here to conclude season five. Wouldn't you agree, Aaron? Yeah, Donington was the perfect choice, Alex. It, it was such a good choice. Um, and I'd rather we did this than Bathurst, that's for sure, especially for two hours. It could have been so different. And um, great job to everybody that's participated in the Sim Sport Championship uh, this season and to many more in the future. Indeed. Stay tuned to the racing here on Simsport Racing, which we appropriately like to call the place to race. Uh, plenty of great things still to come. GT4 on Wednesday nights and also the Janetta British Sprint Series as well. Um, 
I think there was just so many moments in that race. I think we, you and I both unanimously have decided on our driver of the evening and driver of the season, actually, in my case, it has to go to Wild Things, Denise Pope in the 79. Absolutely brilliant performance for her tonight. She was even running at some point as high as the top 10. Yeah, and I, I, I'm in complete agreement with you there, to be honest. It's so nice to see her because it's not it's not always about winning, but it's also seeing signs of improvement and and progression. And she's and she's come a long way. And I, I can't wait to see her in future events with SimSport, see what she's capable of, because she's improving all the time. But um, whilst all that was going on during that race, I just want to say a, be, uh, a huge uh, congratulations also to Yannick Muller, who um, has not had the best of seasons, always found himself in uh, unlucky unlucky spots getting himself in all sorts of trouble but he didn't have a great start to that race but he still managed to get p6 or p5 i think it was and um yeah that's a that's a great recovery drive especially in a in a in an absolute dog fight with uh, regan mitchell well it looks like i'm gonna head down to the interview way to uh, the interview booth uh, aaron thank you very much for being alongside me tonight and i'll catch up with you when we close things off thank you very much OK, down here in the interview booth uh, for uh, the season five finale. It looks like we've got an interview. So let's bring this person in. I've been waiting to have a chat with this uh, this person for a very, very long time. Let's see if we can bring her in. Denise Pope, good evening. Well done. What a race. You were running up as high in the top 10, finishing P17 at the end of that one. Congratulations. Hey, Alex. Thank you. Um... I'm exhausted after that. That was quite intense. Um, the the thing that the reason I I was like I stayed out so long is because I thought we could only take on like one liter of fuel and not have to change tires. Um, so I was going to do that at the end, and then I realised that we had to change tires twice. So that messed up my uh, my strategy a bit. But apart from that, I loved it. I yeah, that was such a good race, and everyone that I was racing with was was really good. And yeah, just. Just loved it. More of that, please. That was ace. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, we'll have that uh, next time when we see you out on the circuit, possibly for, for GT4 or the uh, Ginetta British Sprint Series uh, coming up very soon. Uh, but um, one of the moments, I think, of the race was when you ended up going off at Craners. I literally, the car didn't steer, car didn't steer um, like didn't turn at all, and you literally went grass cutting. That must have been a heart in the mouth moment right there. It was, and I was, I was trying to, the reason that happened is because I was fiddling about with my pit stop stuff. So I was looking at tyre pressures and fuel and so on, and just completely forgot that there were corners to, to be taken. So I, I saw myself go off and all of a sudden I was just like, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall. Um, so I think I got it just in time. That was, yeah, that was proper scary. Well, 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 you'll also be pleased to know, Denise, that um, myself and Aaron have voted you as driver of the evening uh, for your performance tonight. So congratulations. Well done. Oh, no way. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure I deserve that, but thank you very much. That's really well, kind of you. I think it's mainly because, you know, we, we saw you first of all in GT4 and, you know, you and Evan Daffas have, have been, you know, literally uh, being the, the Wild Things representatives here on SimSport Racing. Um, you know, you guys have both managed to uh, consistently move forward, both in GT3 and GT4. Obviously, both of you have not always had the best run of luck, but, you know, we, we, we think you guys, um, you know, deserve some sort of kudos for, for the amount of progress you've made here at SimSport Racing. And it's a pleasure to have you both as part of the community. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I do think we're getting quicker. It's slowly but surely we're getting a bit quicker. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. No problem at all. Well, at least uh, you'll you'll definitely deserve a well-earned drink after that one tonight, Denise. So congratulations. Well done. Definitely. And we'll thank see you, you next time. Cheers, Alex. Bye. Right. A big thank you to Denise Pope. I'm just going to quickly jump into the interview waiting room and just speak to our top three. So bear with me a second.
Right, so we're now going to bring in uh, the drivers one at a time. Well, we're going to bring them all in at once, really. First of all, uh, I'm going to bring in Ross McGregor. Then I'm going to bring in Rich Smith and Jack Young. That's your top three from the podium. First of all, let's turn to Ross McGregor. Ross, 81 laps. Um, great job, mate. And despite you missing a couple of, uh, I think, what, which round was it you missed? I'm trying to remember now. I think it was round three because you, you've been a bit under the weather recently. You came to within 12 points of Simon Crane at the end of that all. That's, that's insane. Um, I wish you never told me that. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I have to be the bearer of bad news, much to my detriment, unfortunately. So it's a pretty good performance then. Um, if I missed a round, that's, I don't know if that's like 100 odd points or something up for grabs. But yeah, fair play. I never really expected to win the championship or anything. So I um, did the best I could the past two or three rounds after returning from illness, as you say. Um, so, yep, I think I had like two firsts and a second. So, um, yeah, I can't really, can't really grumble at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously 81 laps, it was... Uh... You know, it was about a bit of cat and mouse game, really, because you knew that you had the mountain to climb. You know, obviously, Simon had come in to this round with uh, quite a significant advantage um, over yourself, Charlie Crossland, Regan Mitchell um, coming into this round. But I think the Bentley really, really handled itself well around here at Donington Park. And, and you and your good friend, Mr. John Monroe, you both have used the Bentley extensively. Um, and it just showed that that work that you guys have done between the pair of you have re has really paid dividends, and that's showcased tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably without all that work, would be I'd be like much, much slower, much off the pace because I don't think the Bentley was really up to much at Donington. I don't think it's very quick. Um, so I just had to concentrate on being consistent and clean. And it was a really, really tight battle with Rich and Jack. Um, I was just speaking to Rich there, and he said he messed up his pit stops. Whereas I like absolutely nailed my pit stops. I don't think I'd, I'll make two better pit stops in all my life. Um, so that's really what kind of clinched the race for me is just being able to get in front and get out of the dirty air and just kind of run my own race. Um, and obviously at the end, Rich had a couple of issues uh, going off track, as he said. So mm. but yeah, it, was, it, it let me kind of take my foot off the gas a little bit because I was on my final track warning as well in the final stint for about half an hour. So I was kind of driving on eggshells if you can do such a thing <laughs> true very true but ross well done tonight congratulations on the victory and i know we'll see you very soon here on simsport racing and congratulations to simon as well indeed uh jack young uh Hello. jack you, you came back from what was uh let's be completely honest i can't say the exact words but the words disastrous and a particular word beginning with the letter f um and ending in G, which I'm not going to broadcast because I don't do that. I'm a professional. But a disaster from Alton Park in the Aston Martin. You were doing really, really well. But then you you then switched to the McLaren. You put it on pole position. You had that great battle for the first 35 minutes with, with Rich Smith. And obviously Ross factored in. Um, and it was the battle for, for the, the runner-up step on the rostrum. Um, would you say that you're happy with your performance? I know you're not entirely satisfied because I know you would have wanted to have won it having started from pole. Yeah, a little bit disappointed, but the, the first stint was really hard. It was quite hard for the first sort of 25 minutes to keep Rich at a nice distance. I just didn't have the, the drive out of the first corner and the chicane that he had. Um, sort of middle stint was okay. I um, had a bit of low tyre pressure on the right-hand side. And obviously the incident with the back marker didn't help, but I won't go into that. But yeah, no, it was um I'm happy with the pole. I wish obviously wish I could have got the win, but I was happy to finish third. Um second, sorry. Mm hmm And one of the questions I need to ask you, it's gonna be the last question I ask you actually. Will we see you again for GT three? Certainly will. Definitely That's me get that in on there. Brilliant. That's music to my ears. Jack Young, congratulations on picking up second this evening. Well done. Thank you very much. See you later. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Rich Smith. Close. Um, that tank slapper going through the Fogarty S's where the back end stepped out after um, the, the, the slight moment for the Mercedes. You were so close to getting second. And also the back markers made it difficult, for, I think, for both yourself and Jack because... 
neither of you knew what was going to transpire, but still, nevertheless, a, a good effort from you uh, at no, the end I, of the day. No, absolutely. I think, um, you know, under the circumstance, that that final, the first stint, brilliant. You know, I was obviously sat on Jack's bump for a lot of it. He defended really well. Um, I wasn't ever going to push and do, you know, do anything silly like dive bomb. You know, it was a two-hour race. I just wanted to take it easy and, and you know, hope hopefully the pressure would make a mistake. And I sort of got round him a couple of laps before I was due to pit anyway. Shambolic pit stops, both of them. I think I probably lost four to five seconds at least on both of them. Missed my box by a mile, um, which obviously then gave Ross the lead coming out of my second one. Um, yeah, the final stint, my tyre pressure was so bad. Uh, I had a t probably three or four off tracks, but, you know, where I really did think the car's going round and I somehow, some way managed to keep hold of it and keep it in a sort of a, sort of a straight line and, and keep it going. But but I obviously, ultimately, I could see Jack was, after one of my incidents, I could see Jack catch right back up and then obviously disappear again, I think, with an incident with a back marker. Um, but I think, you know, everything that happened to me was my own doing. You know, it was a bit of a, you know, poor tyre pressure management hitting too many curbs poor pit stops um but i think jack drove a really good race uh deserved to perhaps take the second place um i was happy to be in it happy to compete to be fair um i had a, obviously had a dnf having been in second place at alton park as well for a while yeah um and you know there's a few other races i you know could have gone better you know brands i had a, a disconnect when i was in fourth place i think so you know it's just just been one of those seasons i, I just i come into this race no no expectation, just really wanted to do my best I could at the track and, uh, yeah, see what we could get out of it. Well, Rich, congratulations on third. And I know for a fact that we'll see you and Dean Riley back for the next season of GT3. All the very best of luck, buddy. Thanks. And just, uh, just to say a congrats to Simon and also congrats to Ross. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much, Rich Smith. Cheers. Okay, without further ado, let's bring this man in. Simon Crane, congratulations. By just uh, 11 points, you've provisionally secured the Season 5 title. That was a hard evening for you, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it, yeah. thanks for that. Yeah, it was indeed. Um, yeah, what can I say? That, I mean, the round wasn't really good. Um, mm. Struggled at the tyres quite a lot. I mean, but yeah, just trying to keep consistent. And I also had three uh, track mornings in the first 10 minutes of the race. So I was just trying to keep it clean and uh, it worked out in the end. Now, obviously, provisionally speaking, I think Pulse Simsport have also wrapped up the team's championship. You guys came into this round with a massive, I think it was just over a 270-point advantage. Um, that must be a really good feeling. I mean, this is the first time that Pulse Simsport have come into Simsport racing. And, you know, yourself and Miles, you've done a very uh, a, a very good job, obviously. Uh, very difficult, uh, a lot of tracks. Uh, I think Sandport was one where you struggled a little bit. Alton Park was also damage limitation, but to still stay in the top 10, it was close because if Ross McGregor was a further two, well, if he was in the lead and you were a further three places down, he would have won the title by one point. You must be thinking, I'm so glad Donington Park is over and done with right now. Yeah, definitely, yes. You know, I think, um, yeah, hats off to Miles as well for, for the team effort. I mean, he, him and uh, Glenn Guess, which some people don't know, but run the team. Um, yeah, Glenn does a lot of work behind the scenes, and yeah, Miles has drove exceptionally well as well. So I think, um, yeah, all in all, it's been been a good campaign. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have to see what happens next, and then uh, hopefully can build on that and get a consistent uh, championship. Definitely. Well, Glenn was asking me where did you need to, where did Simon need to finish to secure the title, and I was like thinking, what are you going to ask me that now? I just want to wait until Simon crosses the line before I make any proclamations, but. Simon, congratulations to you and congratulations also to Miles and the team at Pulse Simsport for uh, provisionally taking the drivers and the team's titles here on Simsport Racing for Season 5 GT3. Thanks a lot for, um, for the commentary and all the uh, back, uh, background staff, Simsport, and that. It's been a great championship. So uh, thanks very much. No worries at all. You're very welcome. Simon Crane, your Season 5 champion here on Simsport Racing. So I'm now going to uh, head back up to the uh, commentary box where I'll now join Aaron Martin Pilkington and we'll wrap things up for this evening. Aaron, really good to hear from the top three and also our season five champion. Um, <laughs> this race just had everything, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't have asked for a better race, to be honest, Alex. Um, it, it, I thought Alton was really the cherry, the cherry on the cake, but um, that... 
that was a quality race. And it, you know, it just goes to show no matter what kind of level you're at, where you think you're at with your sim racing, there is action for everybody because it was action up and down the grid. And I feel that, you know, if you even even if you feel like your pace is not quite there, come join because the only way you're going to get faster is by competing with people that you know are you know the same level as you and a bit faster than you and just building your race craft that way. And I think that sim sport racing is a place to do that. Yeah. Well, with uh, Aaron's final words there, I think that's it from us here at Sim Sport Racing, the place to race. My name's Alex Goldschmidt. He's been Aaron Martin Pilkington. That is the end of season five for GT3. But don't forget, more to come from Sim Sport Racing. The next round of the GT4 series, which heads, uh, I can't remember where, next Wednesday, because I've been so busy this week. It's difficult Suzuka. to keep a... Oh, there we go. Thank you very much, Suzuka. Yeah, because someone's racing in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can join uh, Tim Fulbrook and uh, David Russell there and then also next week there'll be the next round of the uh, Brit uh, Janetta British Sprint Series as well next Sunday at 7pm that's it from us thank you so much to everyone that has taken part a big thank you to the drivers uh, Denise Pope uh, Ross McGregor Jack Young Rich Smith and our Season 5 champion from Pulse Sim Sport Simon Crane that's it from us Good night, see you very soon, and stay safe. Take care. It's black and white.